Assalamualaikum, good morning So, how are you? Alhamdulillah So, we have about Four participants right now So, I believe that will be more coming in So, inshallah So, and um, I think that um, It's a very great day because of We are talking about something that maybe uh, Related to all of you maybe Alright, so I think that this one is not the first time that you listen, you heard about alternative assessment. I think that for quite some time, and I, I guess that you am uh, mostly the author uh, that writing about alternative assessment come from edX, most likely. And I think that on 2017, 2018, uh, the UM organizing one event um, that um, mentioning or that uh, what, what we call organizing something related to the alternative assessment. All right, so I do believe that um, this is not new, but uh, our focus and intention for today is to, to make sure that how can we design and implement alternative assessment for higher education? Perhaps uh, it's more likely uh, not uh, one absolute, what we call approach or method. Maybe we can learn something from here and try to adapt and adopt with your current practice. I hope that it's more like on sharing and understand uh, the gist of alternative assessment for high ed. So, uh, first and foremost, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Samsul. Um, currently at Faculty of Education, but somehow has been attached with um, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and International for quite some years. Uh, four years with um, curriculum matters and recently focused on the assessment and evaluation for the whole UITM. So I think that because of uh, currently uh, most of the higher institution, they are more towards on and aggressively uh, talk about assessment and evaluation uh, on how we can measure <laughs> our student appropriately. And, and I do believe that um, instead of teaching and learning, I think that assessment one of the important things that we have to think about. So. And um, perhaps uh, also this department is, is actually has been established about two years because of the pandemic. <laughs> so um, perhaps um, before this, uh, this unit is focused on the examination solely. But when the pandemic happened, we restructured this department and we are catering the whole perspective and paradigm or dimension of assessment and we are, not, we are not serving on the final examination, we are more focused on the alternative assessment as a whole. So meaning that at UITM, you, of course you know that we are offering a lot of program, 500 something, we have about maybe 4,000 4, quotes per semester. We have to print about 1 million papers every semester. Uh, then, but but uh, when the pandemic happened, we start to reduce the numbers of final examinations. We focus on the alternative assessment, but again, uh, there are different challenges and also issues happen when we conduct the alternative assessment. So, and I think that we will share our, our thought and experience uh, while talking about the alternative assessment and inshallah, um, hope that we can do some sort of more interactions in our session. So, maybe kita boleh mix languages because of kita tak ada foreigner foreigner. Uh, participants again, so I think that we hope that we can have some sort of interactions. What is your opinion, or maybe what is actually happened in your classroom, especially? And perhaps, as I as I listened uh, before, both of you come from language department. I, 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 uh, I'm not quite surprised because so when we, I conduct my workshop at UITM, the language department are the most what we call um, active participant. All right, I, I can say that across my training at UITM or even at the university, language department must be one of the active participants, eh? and they are the largest <laughs> participant in any um, workshop that I conduct. Uh, I, I think that I just recently come back from UTP to conduct one workshop talking about the alternative assessment. Again, the language department, one of the biggest participant in the in the in the hall. So. Um, and I think that based on my experience, because of the language department, they are like to do some sort of innovation in teaching and learning. So I'm not so sure whether your, your, maybe your practice, your, your research or something else, maybe uh, what we call 
put you in the position that you want to come in in this workshop. I, 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 I think so, all right? So maybe we can have, uh, what we call? Kita kenal mengenal lah di antara satu sama lain. And surprisingly, I balik daripada PhD, I never been at the faculty. <laughs> I balik daripada faculty, I duduk kat faculty 2 bulan je. 2 bulan je, 2 bulan. I, I thought that I can macam, okay, I can focus my teaching and learning. So, uh, do something that I like, do a research and what not. But again, dia tak selalu indah begitu kan. So, after 2 months and uh, I got a call from uh, VC office. Dr. Samso, can you come uh, on the top of apa? Dia kata, can you come and help us? I thought that help us tu dalam tempoh setahun, 2 tahun je. No, dah tujuh tahun. <laughs> so, saya tujuh tahun, saya tak balik-balik ke faculty. And I also have a friend here. Uh, quite a lot. So, dan dan saya juga ada rakan-rakan faculty saya yang melanjutkan pengajian di UM. So, maybe kalau daripada faculty of education. And also, I have one or two student become a staff at this university. So, saya nampak nama dia ada tapi saya tak nampak lagi dia, dia sampai sekarang. Alright, so... <laughs> So kalau kalau dia kalau dia masuk jagi saya saya rotan dia saya nak rotan dia saya kata kenapa lambat kan so <laughs> alright so um, before we start alright so I think that is very important to share with you I already set you a platform alright so meaning that um, these are the today platform I already put everything in this platform oops why why Okay, you can scan with your phone using um, your QR code scan or else you can type this URL to get uh, the access uh, from what we call, what, what we so call as a padlet. So, all right, so which one easier lah, okay, whether you want to scan the QR code or you can type it the URL. So under the DR is actually is actually the underscore. All right. Is also the underscore. All right. Okay. I think that the pallet is not something alien for you. Maybe. All right. Yeah. I think that uh, most likely uh, all of the participants. Or maybe we as a lecturers love to use Padlet, all right? So, all right, good. Okay, okay, good. So, let we have a visit on what is actually happened for today, all right? Um, all right. Similarly, uh, this one is the the, uh, the the plan that we should have, all right? The plan. So maybe this plan can be changed according to how does the participant will react on this workshop, all right? And these are the content of today. Uh, I put it every, uh, the document here. Many documents. Uh, it's not necessary for you to read everything for one day. Just take your time. But this is all the necessary necessary document, as, and, and 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 especially. Uh, the JPT uh, document is most is the most the recent document that we can access from here. All right, and for today workshop, I already parked and uploaded here the the slide uh, presentation, so you can download and you can do some annotation using your devices. All right, and also I have a plan here. What is actually happen uh, going through? Maybe we have some sort of activity and also. Uh, um, maybe some sort of um, what we call reflections uh, going through on how can we develop and implement our alternative assessment. All right. So and and before we start, maybe um, we can have a little bit of introductions. Maybe you introduce yourself, where you come from, and how can I call your names and whatnot. So. We start with the Dr. Wishu, all right, okay. Can you hear me? Okay, hi, good morning. Uh, um, my name is uh, Li Luan, uh, Ng Li Luan from uh, Kauti uh, Bahasa and Linguistics. 
faculty of languages and linguistics. Uh, I teach postgrad uh, mostly at the faculty, and of course, like you all, was <laughs> pushed to think alternatively to assess the master students all right. during the pandemic, and uh, attended uh, lots of webinars, training, and so on regarding right. this. So uh, that's why I'm here today, uh, hoping to beef up my whatever knowledge I have, so right. that I can implement it in my class. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great, great. Hi, uh, I'm Ling Li from Faculty of uh, Basel as well. Yeah, same like Di Luan. Right. Yeah, and I teach German. Teach German. Yeah, German language. Okay. Um, I tried this alternative assessment twice due to the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure whether I did it correctly. All right. Therefore, I'm here to find out whether I did it correctly and what else yeah, what can else? I include yeah. Yeah, yeah. in this assessment. All right, okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm hello. Florence Quack from uh, Chinese Studies Department, Faculty right. of Arts and Social Sciences. I completed my PhD in 2018, mm -hmm. then joined the Academics 2020. But uh, that was another university, so I come to UM only a few months ago. I'm here to learn more, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to familiarize myself with UM's uh, yeah. assessment. Yeah. All right. Okay. Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Nama saya Asia binti Hasan daripada Pusat Pendidikan Berterusan UM. Saya bukan pesyarah, tapi saya pentadbir. Uh, tapi Departemen saya yang menguruskan dari segi um, akreditasi program Jadi saya perlu tengok pada uh, alternative assessment ini Bagi membolehkan saya guide pensyarah-pensyarah UMCZ Bagaimana untuk tukarkan final exam kepada alternative assessment Correct, and yep. uh, is what, uh, apa, sekarang ni kita, kalau kita lihat kebanyakan universiti Semua nak pergi ke arah apa open and distant learning Right, oh, dan, dan sebagainya yes. kan. I yeah. think that is a, is a very orang kata apa, a new sets of orang kata apa, uh, assessment practice. Dan most likely, I think that most of the panel of accredit apa, most of the panel nak tengok on the validity, reliability kan. Yeah. Sebab kita dah biasa amalkan final examination at our university. It's a very good move. Alright. Assalamualaikum and Assalamualaikum. good morning. My name is Azman bin Makmur. Call me Azman from chemistry department faculty of science right. so um i just want to make make uh, because i i i have from a lot of the um what we call the alternative assessment sorry alternative assessment but i think that my alternative assessment is not really up to the things that students can enjoy that's All right. my Understood. my biggest problem so, right. so and then i, I did once um, the uh, for me it's very interesting but my student found out it was too um too heavy for the, to them because right. it quite a lot of the um, of the like assessment ba assignment base and then um, i think this is some sort of student that they have so many assignments so right. they found that uh, my assignment is not as um as fun or not say challenge. challenging is there but it's not fun it's not, not fun. really give them some kind of the um how to say the added value so I think the one thing that I like to share that um, I think the assessment that they like most is the LinkedIn assignment. So I ask them to put the uh, I um, I force them to set up a LinkedIn account and then have to give them a, uh, give um, and share to the public opinion right. about one particular issue. So I think that's one thing that um, I think probably interesting uh, for me and then to the students. But I think it's not really good enough. All right, so I hope okay. you can share more. Uh, you can share more to us. Yeah, we can Thank share you. together. All right. So, Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Noor Harian Timosen. You can call me Yanti. I'm from Faculty of Education uh, from Curriculum and Instructional Technology right, Department. Okay. okay um, I come here because uh, I'm teaching um, future teachers. So I teach them how to do the assessment, but mine also was not really good in this alternative assessment. So I want to learn something new from here. All right. So the the kalau orang education saya tak bisa sangat lah. Okay. So it's supposed to, the idea is supposed to be good, uh, not only for curriculum and instruction, but also assessment. But again, we can do some sort of sharing because of um, I think that is very important to understand that to change our norm, our, our current practice. 
especially focus on final examination is not easy. That's the phase that uh, saya ceritakan sedikit apa yang berlaku di di universiti saya because of we have some sort of time yang memang kadang-kadang memang banyak orang yang tak mempertikaikan berkaitan dengan alternative assessment. So I just want to have a share because of somehow your structure and governance also uh, give you some sort of uh, impact the way that you teach your student and the way that you conduct your assessment in classroom. So it's actually uh, waktu saya dipanggil oleh um, Datuk VC yang saya kata duduk kat fakulti 2 bulan tu because of we want to change the assessment ecosystem. Jadi pada waktu itu uh, memang exam oriented based. You bayangkan tempoh 21 hari pada minggu ke-15 ke-17 tu 21 hari tu penuh dengan exam. I think that we can count every lecturers they akan proctor at least 3 to 4 um okay the session of proctoring so meaning that memang banyak exam so i think that most like, uh, almost likely about 90% of the code is a final examination so due to that uh, we see that how can we reduce the numbers of final examination but focus something that more authentic more experience based to our students so apa yang berlaku adalah on 2017 until 2019 is more towards on how to make sure that we can we can come up with a proper structure and governance and at the same time we start to train our lecturers so we create a module we go to the faculty we do some sort of consultation and whatnot and on 2020 when um, before the pandemic i already proposed to uh, the vice chancellor this is the direction of the assessment for a few for a few years ahead so saya kata dengan dia we should ready ourselves dan kebetulan waktu saya prepare all the the document tu pandemic berlaku so just in time pada masa kita dah kita dah train student staff staff kita yang 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 beberapa tahun kebelakangan itu we are already in, in, in a good in a good position because of tak banyak sangat reskilling upskilling just a matter of teach our lectures on how to design so and and after that uh, when we do some sort of restructuring on our assessment and evaluation ecosystem so kita berjaya kurangkan final examination almost 50% from the existing one but the challenge here is banyak alternative assessment of course you akan ada issue validity and reliability that's obviously akan berlaku. So but the the changing process takes some time but you need to be very what we call well prepared because of you need to facilitate the lecturers with certain mechanism to make sure that the issue of validity and reliability can be accounted time to time. So this is more likely based on, this presentation is more likely my my my, my experience going through uh, with so many years and I hope that we can uh, do some sort of um, what we call uh, sharing ideas or maybe you also can share what happened in your classroom. So before we start, all right, um, I think that it's good to have some sort of maybe so-called a pre-test um, about your competency level, all right, related to this um, pre-test survey. So you just click at this button, all right, you just click here and try to answer the questions. Yeah, at the bottom. You go to the pre-test survey at the bottom, learning taxonomy, just click. Oh, okay, yang QR code tu, yeah? Okay, boleh. Nak QR code ke nak URL? URL, eh? All right. Okay, cuba dapat tak? 
Okay, self rating. Alright, okay. Sama. You punya not fun. Okay, okay. We do it again. Alright. Boleh. Alright, so these are the result of three. Okay, so we can see that there are a few questions here. Can I'm so I'm able to justify the choice of learning taxonomy. I and normally mo, uh, most likely our uh, masalah kita adalah in terms of the choice of learning taxonomy. It's always a, our our difficulty to to see whether the choice of taxonomy is right or wrong. And there are a few dimensions when we read. And to understand what the meaning of learning taxonomy instead of looking on the difficulty, so there are a few dimension. I think that uh, I will try to tap in with how can we construct a good question based on this learning taxonomy. All right, um, I'm able to distinguish the level of taxonomy. I think that is quite familiar because of maybe when you construct your questions, you maybe have some sort of mechanism to control your reliability and validity. All right. Um, you also can relate with your SLT and table of specifications. All right. So when when we embark into alternative assessment or any assessment, the SLT is very important. How many time will be spent by the student to complete the task, whether face to face or non face to face? All right. And I'm able to identify the best writing item. How can we construct a good questions? Asking student a good questions. All right, appropriate questions. So, what kind of intentions that question has been designed also is very important. All right, I'm able to use the best stimulus also to uh, always prepare the answer key or answer schemes, and I aware about the moderation process. These are the things that maybe when you do alternative assessment, moderation also become uh, what we call a very important process because of. Maybe every writer have a different perspective. All right. If you are teaching more than one group, right? If you are teaching one group solely, you yourself as the teachers, and that group is belong to you, is easy. But what if you have several groups, several lecturers, and you want to make sure that the moderation can be conduct uh, appropriately, and to make sure that the interrater not giving. Any inter, uh, any uh, so much different when giving a marks. So these are the results, okay? And perhaps um, it gives us some sort of indicator uh, how good you are and learning taxonomy, meaning that um, and learning taxonomy on how you measure your students. Using maybe cognitive learning taxonomy, affective learning taxonomy, or psychomotor learning taxonomy. Yeah. Um, the use of verbs. How do we interpret? How do we align it with our learning, teaching, and assessment? So, later we will discuss about it. All right. Okay. Before we start to know about alternative assessment. We should understand about the student-centered learning and student diversity first, because of we will design the alternative assessment that cater with many diversity. All right, because of when you conduct the final examination, of course the set of testing is more focused on one kind of setting environment. So, do you have this situation right now, or for the next coming semester? Did UM bring all the students come back to the campus? Already? Then? 
All right. So I think that UITM started to bring our students coming back to the faculty. Not really 100%. It's about maybe uh, it's about 50% um, for this semester uh, for for the last semester and for the next coming semester. We also have the same calendar, right? Um, on on 11, so we'll be we'll bring our student 100%. And faham faham ni lagi kan, bila bring 100%, tiba-tiba keluar isu pendapatan pula kat UITM kan. So, it's, go, it's going viral and whatnot. So, but again, I think that most likely two and a half years we are waiting for this kind of environment. So, these are the future teachers. Kita daripada fakulti yang sama, Doktor. Alright? Fakulti pendidikan, these are the future, future teachers. Dan salah seorang daripada pelajar saya ni, seorang ni dah meninggal lah. One of the students passed away um, sebab kemalangan. So, Ini kawan-kawan dia lah. And all of this fella is going to the practicum session for this semester. So, and perhaps uh, when we, when, before we go and talk about the design and implementation of alternative assessment, so we should uh, look and emphasize what has actually happened for the past two years because of we are talking about the 21st century in design. I think that the 21st century in design is not something very new because of it has been introduced earlier 2009-2010, earlier. Just a matter of, in Malaysia context, maybe because of there are no pressure, there are no, what we call, um, uh, push factor to make sure that we are embarked into this, but again, the 21st century learning design is not only focused at higher education, but also focused on the primary and secondary schools. But again, as I mentioned before, because of nothing happened within that time, so the, the lecturers and teachers too comfortable with their way of teaching. So, but when it comes to the pandemic, everything changed. And I think that it's quite overwhelming because of every day have a lot of webinar. Too many webinars. Until you also not so sure whether you are right or wrong. <laughs> and I think that I ingat lagi, 18 March tu, on the 8th, 19 tu dah start macam-macam webinar dah. Kan? Webinar, the first webinar is how to use Google Maps. <laughs> right? How to use Zoom and how you to use everything. But at that particular particular of time, we are just focused on our teaching and learning. Because of what? Because of we are maybe at the beginning of the semester or in the middle of the semester. We want to make sure that how can we deliver our content according to the week to make sure that the student will get access through our information and also to to the course. All right? And when we talk about the 21st century learning design, we are not talking about to cover the whole topic. We need to ensure that how can we contextualize the topic according to a set of environments, then you need to do some sort of shifting and adjusting your content. All right? So I do believe that when you put your, your content in your syllabus, you will, talk, you, you will listing the chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, everything, yes. I do believe that, but again, how can you do some sort of contextual in your teaching? And because of when we embark into the alternative assessment, we need to do some sort of contextualization when we design our assessment to put everything in context. So we are not talking, when we conduct alternative assessment, we are not talking about the content, we are talking about the context of learnings. All right? And when we understand better about the 21st century learning design and start to think about the contextual, contextualized learning, then the alternative assessment um, can be one of the solution. All right? So, nanti you akan lihat, when I talk about the alternative assessment, oh, ini ke alternative assessment? Nanti you akan surprise. Oh, I dah buat dah benda ni. All right? Dan sebagainya. So, we will talk about the validity and credibility. Uh, credibility. And... How about the mindset? To change the mindset is not that easy because of our trust and belief is on final exam. Right? When you display your result, okay, these are the results. Oh, why so many A's? Huh? <laughs> okay. Why so many A's? Uh, that's the reason why you are not using the final examination to, to benchmark your students. Is it true? Not really. All right. So whether the student get a high score, high, uh, good score, or high score is depending on the questions. Can tak kira lah, you buat final exam ke, you buat alternative assessment ke. If you set your question at lower level, of course, student will get more A's, right? Ataupun if you set your question at higher level, maybe 
some of the students get some A's, maybe some of the students get lower than that. All right, so we need to revisit our questions. I don't, uh, I'm not so sure whether um, uh, the use of alternative assessment gives some sort of the easiest way to get A's. All right, so based on my study, um, it's not really, all right, because of it's depending on the question techniques. All right, uh, that's the reason why mindset and culture uh, must, be, must be there because of if you have a colleague that conduct alternative assessment in classroom, it's very important for you to mingle with them because of they know on how to overcome the issue. That's the reason why maybe uh, some of us maybe experience a different ways on conducting our alternative assessment. All right, so we should learn the process and we want to use uh, everything that we gain and, and everything that we collect in our classroom as a data driven because of it's very important to use data to make sure that we can customize our teaching and learning. Normally, we are not so much focused on data. We just assume what is the best for our students. It's good to have the data because of the data will allow you to adjust your teaching, learning and assessment. So that's the reason why for me, when I start to conduct my classroom, the first thing that I would like to do is to diagnose my student first. And today we will diagnose yourself. All right? Okay? So uh, that's the reason why I like to relate uh, what, is it, what is actually happened in our teaching, learning and assessment. We are talking about the science of learning. All right? So meaning that the way that how people learn and the way that how the learning and assessment develop a function that can improve learning process and experience. So you need sebenarnya macam scientist lah kan. Uh, mostly macam scientist lah. You macam doctor lah. Kan? So a bunch of group come to your class dengan penyakit-penyakit yang banyak. So you want to heal them. So you do some sort of treatment. A different treatment. But before you do some uh, treatment, you need to you need to make sure that what kind of what what kind of you need to diagnose them kan apa masalah setiap pelajar-pelajar ni what are their uh, what we call what is the homogeneous and heterogeneous in the classroom so maybe then then we we can set the environment of the classroom that's the reason why saya boleh kelompokkan when we talk about the science of learning there are three bunch of people yang akan lihat the process of learning the first number one, the people will look on the educational technology. They use the technology, they use the effective, they use the effective technology, and the, 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 the technology helps their teaching and learning. So meaning that they are focused on how they can benefit the use of technology. The second bunch of people, they are looking on the brain changes. They are more towards on neuroscience of learning. They want to change the behaviors. They want to change the way that the way that people think, they want to change everything. Uh, kalau kita baca teori-teori lama tu kan, macam Skinner, Pavlov dan sebagainya tu, they are more towards on the brain changes. But again, ada satu lagi uh, bunch of people, they are using the scientific study. Kan? Kita cerita tentang creative thinking, critical thinking, what more? Uh, compute, computational thinking, mathematical thinking. Uh, semua dekat sini, because of what? Because of it's more towards on the training. Uh, on how to make sure that we can use the scientific uh, reasoning, we can custom the, the scientific reasoning and we try to suit with uh, the purpose of the course or the purpose of the program. So, sebab itu kadang-kadang bila kita masuk kelas, oh, I like to use the problem-based learning because of you want to set the way that this is how we can collect the data scientifically and maybe one of it, problem-based learning, inquiry-based learning and whatnot. So, there are many more. And I just want to share with you one video. All right, this video is we call it the bicycle backwards. Um, the process of learn, relearn, and unlearn. Dan kita nak lihat keupayaan our brain dan juga bagaimana tas-tas yang dilakukan oleh seorang uh, pengkaji ini uh, berkaitan dengan the mental training, the brain training. Okay, kita tengok satu video. Meaning it's really easy and you can't forget how to do it, right? But I did something. I did something that damaged my mind. 
it happened on the streets of Amsterdam, and, and I got really scared, honestly. I, I can't ride a bike like you can anymore. Before I show you the video of what happened, I, I need to tell you the backstory. Like many six-year-olds with a MacGyver mullet, I learned how to ride a bike when I was really young. I had learned a life skill, and I was really proud of it. Everything changed, though, when my friend Barney called me 25 years later. Where I work, the welders are geniuses, and they like to play jokes on the engineers. He had a challenge for me. He had built a special bicycle, and he wanted me to try to ride it. He had only changed one thing. When you turn the handlebar to the left, the wheel goes to the right. When you turn it to the right, the wheel goes to the left. I thought this would be easy, so I hopped on the bike, ready to demonstrate how quickly I could conquer this. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Destin Salem. First attempt riding the bicycle. All right. So, the faster I go, the better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I couldn't do it. You can see that I'm laughing, but I'm actually really frustrated. In this moment, I had a really deep revelation. My thinking was in a rut. This bike revealed a very deep truth to me. I had the knowledge of how to operate the bike, but I did not have the understanding. Therefore, knowledge is not understanding. Look, I know what you're probably thinking. Destin's probably just an uncoordinated engineer and can't do it. But that's not the case at all. The algorithm that's associated with riding a bike in your brain is just that complicated. Think about it. Downwards force on the pedals, leaning your whole body, pulling and pushing the handlebars, gyroscopic precession in the wheels. Every single force is part of this algorithm. And if you change any one part, it affects the entire control system. I do not make definitive statements that often. But I'm telling you right now, you cannot ride this bicycle. You might think you can, but you can't. I know this because I'm often asked to speak at universities and conferences and I take the bike with me. It's always the same. People think they're gonna try some trick or they're just gonna power through it. It doesn't work. Your brain cannot handle this. For instance, this guy. I offered him $200 just to ride this bike 10 feet across the stage. Everybody thought he could do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you didn't understand. You didn't understand. So, this way. <laughs> All right, second. All right, so, uh, whatever you're in. Wait, wait. No, no, you have to keep your feet on. Dude, All right, let's see if we get it. Just give me it. Wait, 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 wait. Like, you gotta start rolling at least. And go. Oh, God! Keep your feet on the pedal. Once you have a rigid way of thinking in your head, sometimes you cannot change that, even if you want to. So here's what I did. It was a personal challenge. I stayed out here in this driveway and I practiced about five minutes every day. My neighbors made fun of me. I had many wrecks, but after eight months, this happened. One day I couldn't ride the bike and the next day I could. It was like I could feel some kind of pathway in my brain that was now unlocked. It was really weird though. It's like there's this trail in my brain, but if I wasn't paying close enough attention to it, my brain would easily lose that neural path and jump back onto the old road it was more familiar with. Any small distractions at all, like a cell phone ringing in my pocket, would instantly throw my brain back to the old control algorithm and I would wreck. But at least I could ride it. My son is the closest person to me genetically, and he's been riding a normal bike for three years. That's over half his life. I wanted to know how long it would take him to learn how to ride a backwards bike, so I told him if he learned how to ride a backwards bike, he could go with me to Australia and meet a real astronaut. Are you gonna give up? No. Go ahead. This is how it starts. Look at this. This is such a big deal. Get up, you got it. Did you see his brain get it? So he, in, how many weeks have we been doing this? Two weeks? In two weeks, he did something that took me eight months to do, which demonstrates that a child has more neuroplasticity, am I even saying that right, than an adult. It's clear from this experiment that children have a much more plastic brain than adults. That's why the best time to learn a language is when you're a young child. All right, today's bike log. I can ride smooth, I can ride fast, 
I'm thinking the experiment is over. Okay, now I'm in Amsterdam, a city that has more bicycles than people. The question is, can I ride a normal bike now? I mean, I've spent all this time unlearning how to ride a bike. If I go back and try to ride a normal one, will my brain mess up? So I've tweeted a Smarter Everyday Meetup, if you will, and I'm gonna see if somebody brings a bicycle and I'm gonna try to ride a normal bike. It's backwards, it's backwards. This was one of the most frustrating moments of my life. I had ridden a normal bike since I was six, but in this moment, I couldn't do it anymore. I had set out to prove that I could free my brain from a cognitive bias. But at this point, I'm pretty sure that all I've proved is that I could only redesignate that bias. So what you're not seeing is just a group of people here looking at me, looking at the strange American <laughs> that can't ride a bike because they think I'm dumb. But I'm actually two levels deep into this because I've learned and unlearned. All right. After 20 minutes of making a fool out of myself, suddenly my brain clicked back into the old algorithm. I can't explain it, but it happened in a very specific moment. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm back. Oh, it clicked. It clicked. Hold on, it clicked. I got it, I got it. Okay, there it is. There was the moment. Okay, I can ride a bike. I tried to explain this to the people around me, and they just didn't get it. They thought I was faking the previous 20 minutes, and I couldn't get anybody to believe me. That looked like I faked that, didn't it? Yeah. Just a fake. Yes. I'm faking. You don't move. That looks so Actually. weird. You were like, no, no, no. You think I'm lying, don't you? Yeah, I don't I'm not lying. I felt like the only person on the planet who had ever unlearned how to ride a bike, and I couldn't articulate it to anyone because everybody just knew that you can't forget how to ride a bike. So I learned three things from this experiment. I learned that welders are often smarter than engineers. I learned that knowledge does not equal understanding. And I learned that truth is truth, no matter what I think about it. So be very careful how you interpret things because you're looking at the world with a bias, whether you think you are or not. I'm Destin, you're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Okay, if you want to support... So, what is your reflection about this video? I don't share. You tengok video tu, maybe based on your perspective. Okay, maybe you tak, tak perlu secara detail, but in, in your perspective, how do you see that video? Everything can be learned and undone. Everything can be learned and undone. Right, okay, good. One more. Okay, right. Okay, right. So what more? How about the aglorhythms? We need to understand the aglorhythms. So meaning that what's actually happened on the first week of your class until week 14, we need to ensure our aglorhythms. If our aglorhythms are going wrong, everything is going to be messy and wrong. So meaning that when we plan our teaching and learning, also assessment, it must be in the forms of aglorhythms. Kan, kalau misalnya kata ada salah satu minggu tu yang macam you tak tak well design, it might be affect your 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 journey ataupun your learning experience. So what more? Knowledge is not understanding. Agree ya? Knowledge is not understanding. Means that learning must be by doing lah. Again, understand also tak cukup, so you need to learn by doing. So that's the reason why maybe, all right, instead of looking at the active learning, providing them with a very good formative and summative assessment is very important. All right, so again, these are the things yang kita nak kena lihat nanti. How can we design a proper to make sure that um, our assessment is going to be more effective? and more interactive. So, I nak skip yang ini, all right? Kita nak buat learning profiling. Maybe some of you maybe already experienced uh, taking these instruments, but um, please visit the Padlet, all right? It takes some time to do some sort of profiling, all right? So, nanti saya akan terangkan kenapa profiling ni sangat significant because of dia ada example-example dalam saya punya uh, perjalanan alternative assessment. So, okay, we go to the packlet. Okay, okay, 
Okay, this one, profiling. Alright, click here. Maybe doctor dah familiar kot dengan crop learning questionnaire ni. Okay, pernah dah ambil kot. So, uh, adalah beberapa instrumen tapi saya suka instrumen yang ini. Um, but this instrument, most likely they have about 80 item. Alright, it's quite a lot. <laughs> right? Maybe we need, to take, we need to take some times. But as mentioned in the in the survey, alright, they cut the 10 minutes will be complete. But based on my experience conduct this survey, most likely you need about 20 minutes. Alright, most likely 20 minutes. But we try our best to set the first one, 15 minutes and 5 minutes extra time for you. Alright? So 80 questions, what you need to do here is if you agree more than disagree, just take. If you not agree, then leave it. All right. So the way that you the way that you 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 answer these questions, don't read too many times. One or two times, then tick and tick all the eighteens, all the eighty. All right. And on the scoring part, just counted the numbers that you are ticking. All right. So you will get the values of which one you are activist, reflector, theorist, and pragmatist. So. Maybe we can have a try. So you need to use your problem-solving technique on how to answer this question because of this question in the forms of PDF. So whether you want to download it or... All right? Yes, you can use another link. Anyone, yeah. Just for, for this workshop, we try to use this one. There is, it's actually, we have a lot. Many, all right? So... Okay. Maybe we can use and start with the learning this uh, this activity first. So 15 minutes. Now we are at 10 something. All right. So maybe we can stop at 10:15. All right. PDF. You need to download. All right. All right. So, you put the cat back in sini. Download attachment. Yes. All right. So you can edit using PDF, Acrobat Reader, or else you can create Excel sheets. It depends. All right. You can count manually.
assume that maybe uh, all of you already done halfway of the um, the survey. All right. So how many of you done? I know that one participant already done, right? There are a lot of technique when you extracting your answers. Some use color coding. <laughs> yeah, the numbers according to the questions. All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay.
based on my experience, we as lecturers, without without having any post, leadership post, most likely we are reflector. Right? Um, we as lecturers, without um, holding any academic post, most likely we are reflector. All right, we are reflector. We are do things. <laughs> all right. So your head of department give you instructions, and you do all of this, all of these things. Eh? Right. So most likely, I think that I believe that most of the participants you are reflectors. All right, higher. Right, re 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 reflectors is higher. But there are in the rooms who are activists. Susah nak jumpa activists ni sebenarnya. Okay, kalau ada tu boleh kira. Yeah, you are reflectors. Oh, little yeah, activists. <laughs> Very little. All right. So how about you, doctor? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> all right. Okay, never mind. Okay. Most likely, all right. Most likely, we are reflector because of our training, our job. All right. So if you Take this for six months ahead. Maybe lah, you keep any uh, post and sebagainya. Maybe this result will be changed. So that's the reason why uh, the way that we learn, the way that we experience, is always different because of what I want to relate this survey with the situation in the classrooms. So in the classroom, we have many students. There are a lot of attributes. So you can use many types of instrument for profiling this is one of it all right so you you can test their brain you can test their visual auditory and kinesthetic just to understand better about your your students all right so the reason why you need to conduct maybe this or other uh, instrument of profiling because of you want to understand and you want to make sure that when you design your teaching and learning or your assessment it must be fit with the current situations so if, for let's like, say, the students like to do some sort of something that reflectors, so meaning that you should focus on hands-on activity and whatnot. So meaning that give students more things to do. All right. So that's the reason why maybe you have a 30 students. There are not so many of the students can become a pragmatist because of the pragmatist one of the attributes of leaders. So that's why when you come class, dalam 30 orang. Nak cari seorang ketua tu very difficult, kan? Because of nak cari yang volunteer to become a leader is very difficult, and these leaders tak perlu ramai, kan? Meaning that if you have four tables, at least one credible leaders, so you cannot have Mr Alpha and Mrs Alpha in the group. So nanti you tak boleh buat kerja. So you need a little bit of portions, uh, uh, students in the group have some sort of very good fundamental on theories. They like to share the idea. They know how the concepts works. They know how the, um, the, 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 they know how to tell about the theories and whatnot. So we need that kind of persons. All right. So we need the reflectors because of she or he will do things, and we need the activists because of they will interact with other people in a such of manner that they understand people more than others. So I give you an example. All right. Kalau saya ada satu kumpulan, normally what happen in my classroom, I will design my classroom based on this profiling. So I takkan biarkan pelajar I macam, okay tak apalah semester ni, I nak kawan-kawan ni sampai semester 6 pun kawan yang sama juga. So it's not going to be happen in my classroom. So I will start to conduct this survey and I start to plot them according to their attributes. So they will, they will working based on their strength and weaknesses. So meaning that I already identify who is the leaders, who are the theorists, who are the activists, who are the reflectors. So meaning that when they do things, more functional is more, um, you will get different input and output. Okay, instead of you doing the, the normal practice. So bila saya masuk kelas saya, I already know that, okay, we need one leaders, all right, one thinkers, one doers, one approaches. So these are the people yang akan bantu untuk 
jadikan classroom you lebih lebih menarik so another one more um, i think that instrument that we can diagnose our student to make sure that uh, for example if you can search for internet you look on the visual auditory and kinesthetic all right it's a very good instruments and i give you one example the first week the way that i conduct my class is start to do some sort of diagnostic to make sure that i understand my student better all right so i put it this as an Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, I will do some sort of adjustment according to the majority. Yeah, according to the majority. To change and personalize one by one is quite difficult. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yes, correct. Majority of the class. Correct. Yeah, correct. Many. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the learning in the class, yes. A combination of many to make sure that we can, yeah. All right. Yes, correct. Correct. Agree, agree. All right. So, these are one of the examples. All right. What I have done with my course. All right. So, there are sets of instruments that they need to uh, took up. All right. So, okay. These are the sets of instruments. All right. Find your strength, brain test and audio auditory and kinesthetic and I do some sort of triangulations and from there I start to formulate what has been illustrated in my scheme of work and try to adjust and shift my teaching and learning so as mentioned by doctors we have a lot of instruments maybe this is one of the instruments that we can use and perhaps you can search and get find the instrument to set to, to suit with your teaching and learning processes okay yes Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I think that the style of teaching, the way of teaching, um, maybe same, but the way of learning may be different. The way that the, 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 the people, the, 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 the alpha people, they learn a lot of different from us because of we are very structured. In, our, in, in my time, we are very structured. We are, we, we are very mastery, one-to-one, one-to-one. But nowadays, they like, they like to have some sort of <laughs> slide. <laughs> and then, okay, not okay, so find another one. So I'm not sure, but, but how about the others? How do you think about the alpha generation?
Correct. Correct. Alpha we mentioned is about the, the, the new generation, it's the way that they learn. The current generation, the now generation. All right. The nature, yes. It's, dep it's depending on how the parent train their kids at home. All right? So I think that one of the intervene may be um, device, internet, and whatnot. So if the parent not really taking care of their kids, maybe they can fall under that kind of attribute. So um, I think that maybe the kids nowadays, they have a lot of choice instead of us. All right? So if you look at this, you pergi dekat your, your own library, that are empty. <laughs> so most of them have a choice at their fingers. So, so they, they are easily can access the internet and whatnot. So do, do, I think that um, there are pros and cons, but again, we, we try to understand better about our students nowadays. All right? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> All right. Correct. Reflect. <laughs> but still problem solving. <laughs> it's nothing, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. I, I, I think that as simple as a game that like a road, roadblocks, a road, roadblocks, right? So you, uh, yeah, role playing games. The, Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to share my experience um, regarding on the Roblox. So I quite wonder, kenapa anak-anak I macam dia duduk dekat satu space dengan dia punya sibling, and they start to think of, eh, macam mana kita nak buat rumah? They are very meticulous tau in, nak design rumah tu dalam Roblox. But the discussion tu is about on how to construct, on how to count, on how, but somehow. Some of the games too is very good games, meaning that to construct their their their, their ideas, their their problem solving. It's just a matter of to 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 choose what is the best. We need as parents, we need to monitor lah, kan? So I so monitor, mula-mula I macam nak marah juga lah. Kenapa macam semua adik beradik macam duduk satu tempat pegang iPad masing-masing. I ingat dia macam scrolling tengok benda-benda yang tak berapa bagus. Tapi dia, dia kata Papa, currently I tengah discuss macam mana nak bina rumah, and this is our dream home. Kata dia. So now our plan is like this, blah blah blah. Oh, okay, never mind. So I nampak okay, ada beauty size of gamification to in, in apa in, in their device. So maybe that's the reason why currently I think that most likely kebanyakan juga pesara-pesara gunakan gamification dalam teaching and learning. So um, I think that this is something that uh, maybe we can explore. Um, and I think that we need we no need to have a very uh, a realistic game, but we can gamify the game in the classroom. All right. Okay. Miss, we have a break, Miss. Pukul berapa? Ah, okay, boleh yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I I kita kita selesaikan tiga minit. We have about three minutes. All right. So. These are the, the, the transitions, all right, uh, about the learning experience uh, models. So um, I think that when we conduct our teaching and learning what, or, or our assessment, we need to ensure that 
there are three sets of dimensions that we need to be very, uh, we need to be very focused. The first one is the teaching present. I think that the teaching present on your side doesn't matter. It's not a problem. All right. Cognitive present is depending on how you design your learning activity, your assessment activity, and whatnot. But usually, but the, our problem here is the social presence. I think that is thoroughly you will nampak jelas waktu you conduct online session with your students. I think that on the first week of MCO, everybody get excited, same gift with you, because of you are trying to figure out which one, how to unmute, how to open the camera. And I think that if you conduct a meeting, one meeting just to setting up your Google Meet and apa orang kata, untuk tenangkan semua ahli-ahli mesyuarat. <laughs> one, almost that one hour, right? So, but, but again, uh, I think that when we conduct online learning, not only on the online learning, as before this, we also have a, um, what we call an issue about the social presence because of, uh, we need the social presence because of the social presence will help you to set the, the climates of teaching and learning. It will gain some sort of learning experience and from the social presence, you can have a discourse. So without having the social presence, it's very difficult. You ask your, your, you ask your student with questions. Your students, the, 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 the question is very good questions. But if the students don't respond, this is nothing. Again, could you explain? And everyone... <laughs> and everyone start to... Please answer it. Please answer it. All right, so... so <laughs> This, this is always matters. This is always matters. So maybe I, maybe later we can share how, on how can we design appropriate questions to make sure that the, we can increase the social pr presence from maybe not responding to maybe have a little bit of engagement, a little engagement with our students. And again, uh, these are the examples, just the examples, right? So this is the, 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 the teaching presence is the, the interactive lectures. The cognitive presence, maybe you use the design thinking and the, the, the social presence, maybe you think about, maybe you start with the think aloud, but you need to ask them in a manner of Socratic techniques questions. So yeah, Socratic technique question, I think it can go through sikit sikit nanti. All right. And this is when we convert into our virtual learning environment. So these are the examples you can use on many platform that you want to use, but normally, um, I think that when we talk about the social presence, we can use many platforms. You can use Google Meet, Zoom, or whatever, and whatnot. Just a matter of how do you engage with your student and allow the students uh, to, to respond with the context of learning. So I'm not so sure whether at UM policy, is it your student need to turn on their camera during the pandemic or just leave it to them? You want to open and you open. If you don't want, then okay, never mind, and three hours is yours. You don't have a policy, and treat, and then most likely the student. So, what is your experience dealing with maybe two hour, three hour classes? All right. Yeah. But all right. All right. Okay. Yeah, correct. But how about the engagement? <laughs> Most of the time, we struggle, right? Yeah. Most of the time, we struggle. If let's say that you have a three hours session with your students, the three hours session is a struggle session for you. Because you need to bring all the efforts, the maximum energy eh, to make sure that the three hours can be fulfilled without the student engagement. We assume that without student engagement. All right? All right, okay. Never mind. So we take a break. Maybe berapa lama? 15 minutes. All right. Maybe we can go to the restroom and whatnot. So we back at 10.45. All right? Okay. Have you taken your coffee? All right. Okay. Um, okay, we continue a bit. All right, on this one. Okay, when we talk about the learning experience, all right, and I do believe that this learning experience has been translated in your program academic. 
Alright So um, I'm not so sure Whether you as academician Manage your program academics But as I As I My discussion with one fella um, She said that The academic program has been um, Managed by the QA department QA, QA Quality Assurance Department Alright So meaning that the lecturers Not really um, into the process of design and develop the program. Is it true? Terlibat secara terus tak dengan pembangunan program? You you have to right? Alright, okay. So meaning that um, you we need to design our learning experience based on the program academic. So we need to state our vision statement, principle, and the framework of the curriculum, right? So on how the, the journey of the curriculum. So what is what is actually happen on that particular curriculums? So we need to develop and plan, and this is where that the curriculum instruction and assessment uh, will be happen at level three, meaning that uh, you provide a proper curriculums, a proper instruction, a proper uh, assessment, and again from here the student will direct their experience of teaching and learning, and this is where that you assess your students whether they are. They are really enjoying your, the, the, the learning process or not and, and perhaps when we talk about teaching all right, So when we talk about teaching In the context of curriculum, instruction and assessment uh, We are talking about the teachers with the students all right? And of course then when we talk about teaching There is need some sort of context and setting So this one I took up from one professor They say that Teaching meaning that you need to have a students Without students you are not teaching Alright So But teaching also need to you to have a content Without content You are not teaching And teaching also you need to set some sort of setting You need to set the setting Then it is teaching So one, one of the best elements about teaching here is The engagement is very important How can we increase the student satisfaction Motivate them to learn Reduce the sense of isolation And also increase the engagement So that's the reason why This is one of the example This is how can I turn over my assessment Into something that More interdisciplinary So This class is actually this, These are the students is the future teachers They are future teachers So normally as a future teachers They need to some, Somehow portray a charis, their, 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 their teacher charisma, charisma To make sure that when they stand and they speak up, they will show some sort of very confident gesture, a teacher charisma. So, because of this student uh, nak pergi buat latihan practicum, so I conduct a two-week session with the lecturer from film, theatre and animations. This, this, this fella, this my friend, is a... Lecturer from film, theatre So this fella, my friend has been designed with me A boot camp for 7 days To increase their confidence and to power up their worker So bila dia bercakap tu Hello, Assalamualaikum for Dengan gayanya, dengan tubuh badan dia, dengan pergerakannya So I buat kelas ni 7 hari <laughs> Waktu tu cuti semester so student pun volunteer okay, Dr. Syam it's okay I kata dengan dia I, 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 I ada 30 orang pelajar I kata dengan dia Okay students Since like The midterm break Maybe some of you Are not coming back Are not apa, Are not uh, Back to your hometown So why not we have Some sort of plan We do some sort of A boot camp I call my friend From film theatre animation We do some sort of Activity And Just to make sure That you are ready For your internships so they are all agree they are uh, they are all in about 20 of them and these are the things this is part of the assessment all right this is very well experienced um uh, activists theater activists all right so at this particular of time, I already construct my rubric to observe them, to monitor them. They learn about the coordination. Slowly, slowly. All right.
these are the experience yang you have to design for them all right Yang ni dia tengok on the listening Alright So bila student cakap How sensitive you are Alright Alright So these are the group of um, On the seven days bootcamp tu I think that the discord is very simple Micro teaching That's it full stop <laughs> Nothing much So the student plan their, their teaching and learning um, uh, their, their plan their, their, their teaching and learning Just They, they, they share in the classroom You, you can settle that, that course easily But I try to find a very Not a hard way But I try to gain some sort of experience So what I did here is After they are going through all the exercise uh, With all the training So they start to pitch their lesson plan So these are the panel of experts Alright So the students um, show their plan And the panel of experts start to Criticize and comment their lesson plan So meaning that um, Uh, you, she or he not only get uh, the advice from me as a lecturer, but also they get uh, the the expert uh, opinion to make sure that they can enhance their 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 lesson plan before they conduct the cl the, the the classroom and teaching. All right. So these are discussions. All right. I call up a few experienced teachers. So these are the people who are good in instructional design. So they give a feedback and comments, all right? So these are all the resources that, because of UITM, we are very uh, welcoming uh, any lecturers from other universities to become inviting speakers. So we give you a certificate, we give you certain hours, you can share your thought and you can share your experience. So if you want to, then I encourage, you can contact me, we can arrange, all right? So, and... These are the, 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 the micro teaching set. I'm not setting up the micro teaching as like usual. What I do is some, something that uh, recording micro teaching. They start doing all the activity. All right. So these are the cameraman. So then we will review and whatnot. So the students start to um, um, start to behave what has been planned in their lesson plan. All right. So this is one of the example of the students. This student teaching maths. All right, so she or he using the the routine and daily life um, exercise. I think that she want to teach on how to do some sort of maybe cakes, simple cakes, and how does the the, the how does the they will mix all the ingredients, but using the mathematical approach and thinking. All right, so they put all the ingredient and start to mix, and then give uh, show the result and whatnot. So. All right. Okay. So these are the learning experience that need to be designed. So maybe later you will design at your own according to your 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 setting. All right. So maybe some of you familiar with the SAMR models, and perhaps I think that when you uh, and and why I relate the SMR model because of this is very easy model to relate whether. When we conduct our teaching, learning, and assessment, whether it is it, something that very innovative or not, not uh, or not, so we, we can uh, justify it from here. So, but again, I want to bring you to see that the innovative pedagogy 2020. I read these articles and I extracted. This is something that very familiar with us currently because of um, The, this pedagogy strategy is depending on uh, is re really looking at how the learning must be by design. Learning must be by design. Um, I'm not so sure because of somehow lecturers tend to be tend to be not to design properly their learning. Uh, I do believe that you have the scheme of work, you have everything, but again, when you go to your class, at least you need to have a very proper planning. How do you plan your class from maybe from 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11? So what is actually happen? So you need to plan in that such manner. 
for me for me i think that i need to plan because of what because of when you plan uh, your your learning meaning that you try to tend to be you you try to make sure that the student able to learning by doing so meaning that you empower your students more than yourself kan maksudnya you masuk kelas you facilitate saja sebenarnya kalau ikutkan pengalaman saya if my class 3 hours i saya sangat jarang bagi kelas saya sepenuhnya 3 jam on lecturing i give them about 30 30 minutes to 45 minutes and the rest is design them to become more active in the classroom all right nanti saya akan tunjukkan plan tersebut so that's the reason why uh, this document is very i think that um, very useful for me because of in this document uh, they highlighting about the active learning strategies that increase student understanding and knowledge and also they promote the collaborative learning and also teamwork that's the reason why the earlier one we do some sort of profiling because of we want to see the potential for every students all right and i think that uh, we are adopting the flip classroom so meaning that if you are flipping your class meaning that you have more time for example for physical face to face to do some sort of more activity in the classroom in which that i we already discussed before this we are talking about the gamification simulation showing them a videos or maybe you have some sort of interactive content that maybe can be created by student or maybe you yourself uh, share with your students and allow and encourage them to do a lot of note taking log logging events and uh, reflections so that's the reason why the every point of here i already put the tagging because of this all of this tagging have the example in my uh, presentations all right and also provide formative feedback and encourage self peer assessment and i think that most likely we are talking much about summative assessment is actually we should focus on the formative assessment instead of summative because of you we have more time with them especially when we talk about the formative assessment all right so now I not to teach you on to become the instruction designer is not fair because of to become the instruction designer you have to really going through many courses you need to take your master in educational technology and whatnot i i tend not to to, to focus on this but i want you to focus yourself as a learning designer you need to become a learning designer focus on your learner how they will acquire the knowledge and the skills so meaning that you you no need to have or maybe don't so much focus on what kind of models that you want to use just think about your students just think about your students all right and i do believe that um we i do believe that uh if you have read about the kirkpatrick four level of evaluation this one is the assessment models i think that most of the medicines dentistry pharmacy or health science using this model for their curriculum all right so meaning that um, we start with the reactions how does the student react on your learning experience and how does the learning occur and how can the student demonstrate their skills life skills value and responsibility and how does the student change their behavior towards the ends of the curriculum or towards the ends of the course and of course all of this need to be measured and how does it will be impact into your curriculum especially for your courses so meaning that along the way of 14 weeks plus three weeks what is actually happened to the students all right and again i think that these are the miller pyramids i do believe that most of you uh, believe that instead of knows and know-how the student need to learn by doing we need to make sure that the student not only uh, focus on the factual and conceptual approach uh, uh sorry a factual and conceptual knowledge but also they uh, allow them to, to 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 do and also to think about it and this is where that the cognitive affective and psychomotor will play an important role to design your course learning outcome all right and perhaps um i do believe that most of you are very familiar on using the cognitive complexity from c1 until c6 
this one, I think that you are quite valuable about it. But I think that there is there are one more dimension that we should look at is how can we define the context of knowledge in the four forms: factual, conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive. So meaning that you can test the student knowledge to use whatever complexity, but again try to cluster it into a into these four dimensions. So what I have done to you here is I provide you the levels of dimensions. These are the cognitive uh, process dimensions. And you can use all of this work to design your formative and summative assessment. So meaning that if you want the students um, to uh, maybe, if you want to assess the student on the evaluation uh, difficulties, conclude so you can choose whether you want to test the factual, conceptual, procedural, or metacognitive. If let's say you want to test the procedural, so you can use this verb or similar and start to design your questions. Simple as that. That's the reason why we need to really understand the functions of difficulties and know better about the dimension of knowledge. That's the reason why when I design a question for my students, no matter what, whether it's alternative or final examination, I will ensure that which question that address on the factual, conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive. Because of the way that we design the question is totally different. If you want to make sure, that if you want the students, for example, to summarize, to understand, or to, to summarize until to execute, you just need to put in the context or the substance of your questions, then you're able to generate one questions. All right? So these are the tables that you can use for your teaching and learning. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. This is one example. All right. Since like everyone maybe know better about how to use the, the, the Bloom taxonomy and whatnot, okay, we just imagine that we want to shift our teaching to learning. So these are the model will lead us to understand on how can we do how how can we do some sort of transition from teaching to learning. So I give you an example. All right. I give the simplest example such like learning materials. Okay, I do believe that most of you have a PowerPoint, right? But your PowerPoint, because of you have the PowerPoint, you want to make sure that you, you want to share with your students and allow the student to get access on that PowerPoint, you convert it into PDF. So meaning that you are using the technology as a direct tool, there is no functional, of, there is no functional change to the lesson. Meaning that, your existing PowerPoint and you convert it into PDF. That's it. The student can get access, the student can use it. All right. But now, from substitution, you want to augmentation. What's going to be happen? Instead of, from using, instead of PowerPoint, you convert into Padlet because of you want to engage with your students. You put your content and allow the student to engage and see how deep the student engage with your content and how good the student understand on your content. So, meaning that you are using the technology tools, there are some functional to improve the lesson. So, dekat sini sebenarnya yang you dah boleh flip. Right? Dekat sini you dah boleh flip because of you want to see the engagement. Meaning that, I had a nota before my class. Okay, this is my nota, this is my notes. Why not you access my note first? And we start to maybe have some sort of ball rolling and ask a little, maybe ask a, what we call as a preliminary questions and we start to discuss here, engage. All right? But somehow, you want more than engagement. You want experience. So meaning that you try to modify from engagement and allow the student to engage with certain experience. So meaning that you maybe need to extend your E platform into the four six elements. Creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. Instead of engage, students start to give some sort of problem, solve problem and solving. Instead of engage, students start to share and do some sort of reflections and whatnot. And 
the highest hierarchy of transition from teaching to learning is to redefine making learning in a context so students actualize students solve the problem and they are regulated the knowledge in which they start to innovate and most likely this one is the most difficult part to 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 reach to to reach but it's not impossible all right okay that's the reason why after going through so many models so many articles and what not we believe that yes we can focus in teaching and learning but at the end of the day you need to measure your students all right so that's the reason why uh, the JPT come up with so many initiative about the holistic assessment to 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 make sure that these are the component has been addressed when you conduct your assessment all right so we revisit the conventional versus alternative assessment so perhaps by looking at alternative assessment we are able to see the divergent thinking and generate possible answers at that particular of time we are not looking for the right answers we are looking at the best answers this is the most difficult things i think that most of the university want to accept this because of most of the program academic they are looking at the right answers instead of the best answers that's the reason why the final examination become um what we call the high stake assessment instead of the others dan sebenarnya uh, at UITM also we have conduct um some uh, this is part of my grant also we have conduct um one one study uh because of we, we because of we cannot conduct the final examination we so call as a close uh, what we call uh, close test right close test examination and the student uh, and, and lecture come up with the idea of open book test or open book examination based on my study they are exactly they are, they are actually conducting the traditional approach of doing testing so meaning that they when when we talk about the open book test normally the question must be set at higher levels thinking questions and you need to contextualize the questions according to the uh, according to the certain setting and students need to regulate their knowledge and translate in the forms of their understanding but again when the when the lecturer design the question it looks like similar as the final examination approach the traditional approach so that's the reason why all the answers is easily can search from the internet and student copy and paste and make it as a answer for their questions these are the challenge because of the misconceptions all right about the use of alternative assessment so it's quite worrying because of number one we are talking about the skill of teachers design the questions number one number two you are producing a student with a wrong technique of testing so meaning that the student get many a's because of your testing is not right so it's quite um, worrying and i think that these are the things we should look at because of um without a proper training then i think that dia akan jadi apa dia akan jadi isu yang berpanjangan lah and we can see that um study yang saya buat tu we do some sort of um exam paper and answer script auditing almost about 25 faculty so we do all the the study and that's the results a standard setting one of it but i think that the most uh, i think that based on my experience i think that um, the lecturers need to be what we call well trained on how to design the questions so meaning that they know how to design the question but 
a good questions. All right, so I think that that is the most difficult part uh, because of yes, somehow the lecturer can come up with a very uh, a question, maybe for example MCQ, AC, and whatnot, but on how to design and turn it into something that more authentic, uh, more personalized, uh, more contextual. This is something that we need to highlight in future. I th I do believe that maybe sooner or later. Uh, all the universities start to reduce the numbers of final examination. And I think that you heard about this news. This news. Dasa tak wim uh, untuk peperiksaan akhir. There is no more exam on Friday, Saturday and Sunday starting from this semester. If you heard about it, no. that is going to be happen for this semester. You wondering, I, um, I, I got this uh, dasa somewhere on last two weeks. Saya dapat pekeliling daripada JPT. Kenapa tahu? Dia dapat kenapa dia, 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 sebab apa dia keluar pada dasar tu because of the student complain to the menteri because of they have to take an exam on Sunday and Saturday and Sunday. Alright. So, yeah. And but uh, it's happened to our university because of their their they they have more students. There are lots of students so they have to use Sunday Saturday and Sunday. Oh, they yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, what happened for this year? For 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 this coming semester, on week 15 to week 17, we need to exclude Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. From 21 day, we only left about 12 day. <laughs> 12 day. So I'm not so sure. Uh, I think that kalau you pun tuaf dia pun, I rasa macam ada back to back kot. Yeah. I can ada back to back. So what I did with my department, we start to do, we start to do some sort of simulation. We did our simulation. We pull some data about 20 students with 210 codes, and we identify that if we only execute our exam on Monday until Thursday. There are almost about 5,000 have to really face two back-to-back. -back. So meaning that they have exam on the morning, also on the afternoon. 3,000, three back-to-back. -back. Morning, afternoon, and the next day, morning. And 1,000, four back-to-back. -back. Morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, non-stop. That's the implications. So, I'm not so sure how can we overcome. Itu saya kira 200 kot krusus tau. Soon also, uh, yelah, tadi ada yang kata, you also complain to the ministry kan? You get your rest three days, and you have to face four back to back lah. Kan? So, what, 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 what we can do? We cannot, we, uh, I think that we are not encouraged to have an exam on the, uh, after AIDS. Alright? Who want to proctor you? You want the lecture to proctor you 8 p.m. until 10 p.m.? I don't think so. All right? So you have to bear all the consequences. Saya dah buat tu. 208 kot kursus. Cuba you check you punya berapa, berapa kot kursus you ada. You ask your... Yeah? You don't have that many again. So it's something that manageable. Maybe... Yeah. Strongly advised 10 to... Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. That's the reason why the direction of the university must be very clear. But the thing yeah. Is, despite that, it's not that everything can be tested alternatively. Yeah. Correct. Correct. You know, there are some things that you need to understand, and you need to memorize. You need to. Correct. Correct. Yeah, quiz. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, correct. Okay, uh, I'll regard your questions about the standardized test. I think that we can have the standardized test, but not so much focus on the final examination. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right, good. All right. Correct. 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 Yes. Yeah. So we are trying to in general, borderline. Yes. All right. All right. I said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have we we, we do In mistake. Yeah. Session, no matter. No matter yeah. Tak tak selesai pun, tak selesai pun. Somehow, somehow the solution may be not during the process. The solution maybe you can find after the process, yeah, right? The you can see the, the pattern so high. So high. The yeah, so correct. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Some, so Is it that much when you? Sometimes, sometimes yes, right? Sometimes. Yeah, because of you are catering for the whole bunch of people, so bunch of group. Yeah. Okay, so if the yeah. 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 Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Standard setting. Yeah. Correct. But the standard setting also need to come up with a very good methods. Oh, modify all right, okay. The most simple one, yes. Yeah. All right, okay. You are from dentistry, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, okay. Multidisciplinary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you have so many jargons, lah. To take to taking care, so, okay. All right, okay. Um, so we want to make sure that we aim the development of meaningful skills, interactive performance, and we want to promote the integration of various. So meaning that, if we embark into the alternative assessment, we are not only focused on the cognitive processes, but also we can also look at the affective and psychomotor domain at the same time. So, all right. So these are the the, the fundamentals of. Um, Alternative assessment, all right. So that's the reason why, uh, why we are so much uh, towards on alternative assessment because of we want, uh, yeah, we can uh, see on the character buildings, all right. Uh, the real problem, reflective thinking, meaningful learning, and also the entrepreneurial mindsets. So these are the attributes uh, when we conduct um, the alternative assessment, perhaps. And I think that. Most of you maybe have access into this document, have you? 
Apa tak dalam dalam padlet saya tu ada saya dah saya dah download. Alright. So I'm not going sebab because of this book is actually have a very complete package to design on the alternative assessment. Alright. So I, I I don't want to replicate the content from here because I'm also the writer from this book. And I think that you are knowing the people here ko ada ada ni Prof Wong. Yeah? You know Prof Wong? Wong Sulan. Wong Sulan eh? from education. From UM this one pro, uh, this prof from UM. All right. This one UPM. Oh, not UM. All right, UPM. All right. Ada tak orang UM kat sini? Tak ada. I think I I yang I kenal uh, apa PM Faradina lah. Kan dia yang yang kerap uh, untuk buat benda-benda begini lah. So you can access from this book. There are lots of example here. All right. So one of the attributes of um, Alternative assessment is the personalized assessment. All right. So we are measuring the students' readiness. The students are more uh, responsible towards their learning processes. And and normally, all right. Normally, if we treat our assessment, it's actually one of our biggest challenge is to personalize individual performance. So you need, if you have 30 students, you really need, really need to understand the 30 students' performance. And you sh you need to monitor from week to another week to another week to see their progress and to see whether they are improved or not. So it's more towards on personalized. That's the reason why you will be, will be empower the feed forward, also the feedback to help the students. So and I think that um, in my class, all right, I give you one example. I want to share with you. There are some portion of assessment where the students can negotiate their marks. Negotiate their marks. How? All right. So I give you an example. I have maybe four summative assessment. All right. So from four summative assessment, there are one assessment that I, I allow them to negotiate their marks. Not much. Not much. Maybe around one to five marks. All right. But. When the students submit, for example, they submit one assignment, for example, a lesson plan to me, all right? So I start, uh, and I, I, I do my marking and give my feedback and whatnot. So, and then I open up a one venue for the students. Okay, student, this is your marks. If you want to get one to five marks, these are the criteria that you need to fulfill. One mark, what you have to do? Two marks, three marks, five, four marks, five marks. And this deal only valid for one week. So, for example, if the student get about maybe 25 out of 40, okay, sir, I want to do for two marks. And she or he will do for two marks. And we start to negotiate whether you are allowed to get two marks or not. So, these are the practice that I'm conducting for my class because just to do some sort of maybe what we call the interactive uh, session with students uh, and I think that when I do this kind of approach to say that sir after going through so many semesters there is no lecturer asked to do some sort of negotiation about their marks normally they are just receiving the marks <laughs> alright so and um, because of what because of um, we, we, we just to make sure that the students because of the student improving so we know that student can do better then we give some sort of um, what we call peluang kepada mereka lah. All right. Authentic, okay. Most of the authoritative assessment must be authentic assessment. So you need, you need to make sure that you have to contextualize the task. The gist of the alternative assessment, contextualize the task. All right. So that's the reason why it requires students to construct the knowledge and they have to do some sort of maybe a little bit of more inquiry in the classroom. That's the reason why when I design assessment for my student, for undergrad especially, I love to design what, we, what I call as a guided questions. Guided questions that lead the student to complete the task. Not spoon feed them, but to lead them to the task because of you already put them in the context. I give you an example later, all right, after this. Integrated assessment in which that we need to make sure that not only summative is very important, formative also can give you some sort of 
information and data to improve your teaching and learning. And most likely, I use the formative assessment almost of my teaching and learning process. So I, I will design my formative assessment appropriately, appropriately same as I design for my summative assessment. So meaning that for 14 week lesson, I design the formative assessment to make sure that the student, when they come into my class, there are a lot of activity that prioritize their learning experience. So meaning that you need to have what we call the formative assessment activity bang in your desktop. <laughs> Seems like macam you ada soalan-soalan exam dalam bank you, macam tu juga the formative assessment also you have what we call a basket that you can pick and choose and customize in your classroom. So for my, for, for my experience, I already designed almost 200 formative assessment activity. So if I want to pick, if I want to choose from 200, okay, I want to choose question number 53, activity number 53. Pick up and use it. Pick up and use it. So this is how you, because of what? Because of when you design formative assessment, meaning that you are constructing a question, you are simulating many things, you are expecting the answers and whatnot. So you should, you should keep it and improve it. Kadang-kadang kita suka pakai macam, okay, dah pakai, okay, that's it, full stop. Nanti cari lagi yang lain. Nanti, meaning that you, you're not able to sustain Kan, kalau tak dia baca apa, baca pepatah Melayu kata apa, kais pagi makan pagi kan, kais petang makan petang kan. So, you buat sebab, you kena buat. It cannot be like that because of you want to be sustained. Because of you maybe have about 10 to 10 years experience in teaching and learning. Why not you have a, a, what we call a, 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 a complete set of formative assessment, whereas you can pick and choose. I think that is going to be a wonderful idea, right? And then... You can, you, even though you can, when you, how, how mean by sustain, meaning that your formative assessment can be a part of the data for your summative assessment. Is it can be a part of your research for your teaching and learning? It can be. It can be. Right? So it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say your class. Mm-hmm. Do you al yeah. I have to say the truth. All right. Poor performance. Consider the students always working hard and achieving. Yeah. Maybe have exam anxiety or something. Yeah. So I would let the student based on the performance they have. Correct. Correct. So is that the correct approach? Mm, it depends. I can say that it's not correct or correct because of I think that at the Okay, uh, if you ask me that, yes, we use the formative assessment for a different intention because we want to make sure that the student uh, will be provided a good learning experience, all right? But somehow, at the end of the day, we need to see the true performance of the students. Maybe because of we are doing formative assessment because of we, she or he collaborating themselves. They are communicating, they are doing together and whatnot, maybe we can't see the true potential of him or he, she or he. The only summative that we can see that. So for me that I still treat the formative, the, the summative assessment in which that the individual capability that we can measure directly. All right, sometimes if you think that, okay, maybe you want to top up a little bit, it based on your consideration. Okay, but, but you're talking about integrated assessment. Yeah. Yeah, picking up each other, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you give you some sort of signal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the reason why you need to have some sort of moderation to discuss about it. <coughs> All right? Maybe as early as you say that maybe your summative assessment 
Maybe. Something wrong about this summative with the Christian. So you need to do some sort of moderation and look back for the whole spectrum and perspective. The question has been passed from the formatting committee. That's the reason why. Of course, you see only the language and whatnot. Yeah? Just the formatting. All right? Yeah. That's the reason why moderation is very important. If you look back on the uh, what we call the good guideline practices, there, there are multiple cases that you are allowed to have some sort of moderation to see back, to look back the performance as an overall. That, that, that is our, our, our responsibility if, you, if we notice that's happened. All right? Is it the, the mod, you have a, prop, a very proper moderation here? For me that, yeah, giving marks, for me design questions, giving marks, yes, this is our culture. We need to do that. But I think maybe some of the uh, program academic provider, they forgot about moderation. We need to do some sort of moderation to see whether we are giving them a fair marks or not. If you, have, if you found out maybe there are some issue we need to solve it before the results has been officially announced. Yes, you can do as a standard setting or not, yes. That's the reason why if you embark into the alternative assessment, there are, I think that there are, there are, there are more needs. You need to be more focused on, on that one. So meaning that the alternative assessment also need to be moderate. At UITM, for, i give you one example. The moderation process is, um, is, is a must process. So before we release the result, the department, the, 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 the department need to revisit all the, the scripts and going through all the codes. So there are a multiple, uh, what we call techniques. There, there are a few techniques, whether you can do some sort of, we call as a, um, self moderations we can do a group moderations or even we can do a peer moderations and for the group also we have a different techniques so maybe you, the group you want to revisit for the all answers you want to select the questions you want to go by tiers it depends but the moderation is a must So we stop at that yes, yes, yes. All right. 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 Yes, yes. C minus to C, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. But like, like having a micro view, like what you were saying, I think, yeah, I think it's very valuable if you're talking about alternative. Yeah. But the thing is also, we don't have time to, do you have time to, it's such a short time, so many students have to key in the... Yeah, correct, correct. If you don't plan in the time for moderation, yeah. there's no time. There's no time. That's the reason why um, in your... Work, uh, in our at, at our university, we have some sort of maybe a 14 days when the final examination has been cut off, ended, and there are 14 days where is the the marks uh, you enter apa, all the all the process should be happen until the results have been released. So at UIT we we have about maybe about 14 days. 14 days from, uh, yeah, from the board meeting. Yeah. You buat atas nama department you eh? Yeah. Uh, maybe if you if you university don't want to, you can set at your department level. 
Because of if you want to embark into the alternative assessment, it's very urgently needed to have this moderation because of the rate itself have a problem. Okay, the rate itself, we ourselves also have a problem in terms of assessing our student. Because of most likely when we talk about the alternative assessment, maybe some sort maybe some of the tests, maybe we can cause an objective test, but mostly subjective test testing. So we need to be uh, very careful and mindful. Because of what? Um, I just want to share my practice. Because of we want to embark into the alternative assessment, for the appealing part, it's not only the student can appeal for the final examination, but also the student can appeal for the final assessment. Uh, sorry, you mean the appeal about the exam? Appeal about their results. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for meaning that uh, normally the university on, only allowed for the final examination, right? But at UITM, we allow for the final assessment too. Oh, uh, make up. You mean make up uh, appeal, appeal. Uh, so meaning that if you if, if the student have the presentation, maybe for the summative assessment uh, on the final uh, on the final one, they they do some sort of maybe a presentation. If the presentation is the the presentation is fail, they can appeal. And do that again. Uh, it's not happened to you, right? Uh, it's happened to our university. We allow them. Uh, we 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 allow them. They, uh, we allow them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of what? Because of you encourage lecturers and teachers to do some what we call a flexible teaching and learning. Why don't you encourage teachers and students to apply the same thing on the assessment? But we, you have a certain controls and, and mechanism. So that, that's, the, that, that's the, 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 the thing. If you want to embark into the alternative assessment to change the ecosystem, these are the things that you need to, to think about. If not, you just apply at your classroom. That's it, we'll stop. <laughs> okay. uh, I think that for the, for the time being, just focus on your classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on. Yeah. Because of the alternative assessment, need the buy-in from the top management. Yeah. Then uh, I think that because you you come you came here because of your patience about you want to know better about the alternative assessment. That's the reason why you come in. All right. But for your ITM, this one is serious. Business for us, <laughs> all right. We treat this as a serious business for us, all right. Because of, um, uh, we we not so sure whether maybe three to five years, something gonna be happen. Same like pandemic, so we just predict what happened maybe ten to five to ten years ahead. So we need to equip and prepare our our staff with a proper training and proper mindset, all right. That's my part. So saya kena selesaikan tugas saya dalam 2 tahun ni Lepas tu saya nak balik fakulti <laughs> Saya tak nak ada <laughs> but, but I think that when when I I think that I have shared with um, With the QA uh, uh, University QA I think that I have one session with um, My Khan I think that UM, UTEM uh, Every university, uh, what, every, uh, university awam I shared with them how do you ITM transform into that. So I really shared with them. On, on 12 also, with them again. Try to get some buy-in. I hope that they listen. <laughs> All right. Okay. These, these are the, the, the alternative assessment can be conducted through real-time assessment. All right. Uh, this one is very good, real-time assessment. So I love to use this. So that's the reason why partner and for group formation, if you use the profiling instrumentation, you can apply and adopt here. All right. Activity, complexity, and calibration. So that's the reason why when you understand your people, then you start to calibrate and start to design the activity according to your students and use the small group and support strategy. Small group meaning that not less than five. Five, four to five is just nice. Six, clumsy. <laughs> Seven, <laughs> worse. <laughs> All right. So, I think that uh, three to five is just uh, three to five just nice. I think the four five is just nice. All right. And the whole group instructions. 
we need to design the instruction for the whole groups. Something that very easy, not easy for you, easy for students to understand. And normally, bila kita buat instruction ni, kita fokus apa yang kita nak kan? <laughs> But I think that we should think about what the student will get from your instructions and start to think about how the student will adapt with their peers, with the activity and how does the activity can be scaffold instead of spoon fed. All right. So that's the reason why uh, this is the, the teacher response domain that should be looked at. So how about the students? The first number one, the student need to have some sort of content priority or the prior knowledge. Do something that with their prior knowledge, peer collaboration and types of questions. What kind of question that we want to ask them here? So this is very important. All right. So these are the example of the self and peer assessment. Um, this is one of the component of the assessment that we can do using the uh, alternative assessment, self and peer assessment. All right. So I love to use self and peer assessment because of I give the empowerment to the students and their friends uh, to give marks. I allow this because of what? I have an experience then when the student do their presentation, their friend at the back also so busy to touch up their presentations. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, nobody listened to she or he presentation and you asking And you are the person who asking the same question going through all the groups. And all the students at the back just, just too busy to make sure that uh, they can present well. And they miss all the contents of the presentation. So what I did here is, I want to eliminate that kind of distractions. I set for them a peer assessment. Give them a little bit of portion of marks, maybe five marks, very little one. Give them one scope and let them to rate their friends. That's it. Do you think that they will do some sort of kind of maybe touch up their presentation or not? I don't think so because of what? Their friend at, in front will start to look at whether you are listening my presentation or not. If you are not, be careful. Your, yeah. Yeah. Because of conspiracy among the students. Yeah. So once they finish, they conspire with everyone, everybody keeps maximum marks. Yeah. So in the end, it's meaningless. Correct. When I look at their marks, whether the quality is there or not, everybody gives two marks. They are too. They are. They are too generous. Or they are. They are. They are complex. Oh, but they are. Yeah. I give you five. I give you five. That's why you need to set a rules here. So, Do some set of rules. Justify why. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you set some standard. Yeah. If you give more, yeah. <laughs> that you have the plagiarism issue after that, <laughs> but again, I, but I think that it, it, it is working. Yeah, I do believe that. Yeah, but somehow um, I think that maybe because of um, I, I I show to them the importance of uh, this peer feedback, and the students start to realize this feedback is very important because of they give uh, they give the students the true uh, feedback whether the, the stu whether the presentation is good or not. And you can see here, the student do give us some sort of pattern like, like this. There are students like, yeah, four or five, but there are a little students maybe not so happy with she or he presentation. And as, a, as a you mentioned, the student uh, gives some sort of feedback here and whatnot, and the student can, what we call, uh, address on all comment and start to improve Maybe for the next coming. So what I did here is when the student completing uh, all the presentation, I immediately share all of this result to the students and they start to look at which area that they have to improve. So again, as, as you mentioned, 
maybe there are some bias maybe because of their click all right so so they want to keep their relationship <laughs> uh, all right yeah 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 Yeah, good. Yeah. Shoes, yeah. Yeah, good, good. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Very good idea, and then we share the the, the good the good practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Before you kill me, I kill you first. <laughs> yeah. Very much conscious. Yeah. <laughs> Very, <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, all right. So we also can do the self assessment, but a lot of job here. Yeah, self assessment. Really, really, a lot of things you need to do here. Um, uh, I do um, do the self assessment among my students, but it's very time consuming. You need to manage your time. You need to consult your student every time. So. When you choose and pick the certain certain alternative assessment, you have to be very mindful because your time is not it's not many, right? Because of your academician, you have to go to the meeting, you have to do everything. Then you have to 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 to, to choose wisely which one is the best. But somehow there are pros and cons. But most probably, when we talk about the alternative assessment, we put our effort more than the conventional assessment. All right. These are the group-based assessment. So, I love group-based assessment. This is my class, actually. They are so busy with the salad, <laughs> the bread, and whatnot. This class is very easy, actually. Um, I want to teach them on, uh, on the instructional media. But on that particular day, I asked my student, okay, student, because of we want to get some sort of different experience, I asked them to make a sandwich in the classrooms. So every each table bring their own sandwich ingredient with a different menus. Maybe they, they, maybe student uh, will uh, uh, maybe sandwich with mackerel, sandwich with chicken, sandwich with everything and whatnot. So they start to bring uh, their own ingredients. And uh, what I'm trying to teach here is when the sandwich maker do did the sandwich. So I asked them to do a few different activity to record the process of making sandwich. Okay, the first person they write the the way that how uh, she make the sandwich. The second person draw drawing, do did the drawing. The third person record by phone. The the fourth person. Uh, uh, Capture by still photo. So a different function and job. And what I want to share here is, is it with using the different sets of media, it will give you a benefit or disadvantage. So it's a very simple one. Just want to bring the student the experience of, okay, there's some new class to buy sandwich. Oh, okay, baru ingat, I pakai macam ni, macam ni. Just, just making everything in the context. Kalau tak, I boleh je, I buat satu slide. Boleh je nak buat. Okay, you pakai still photo, these are the impact. Nak pakai video, these are the Boleh, you can do that way. But just a matter of, I want to put a little bit of experience. I want the students to collaborate. I want the students to think about it. And create their own meanings. So, then, 
then the student, every each student have their own different meaning when they talk about the instructional media. So meaning that I try to make sure that uh, not only to assess their attitudes and uh, reflection, but also to look on the thinking process and how they integrate the idea. You have many people in the group. How can you understand each other and how can you, what we call, respect the ideas and giving back the answer in the appropriate manner. So, and then the learning become more relevant, become more interesting and become more enjoyable. Alright, so somehow kadang-kadang kalau kita lihat, maybe, maybe uh, when we design the group activity, we still get a very passive response from the students because of we are not putting things in the context. So, this is one of the example. I think I have the video of it. Yes, this is the video. So the students start to record, right? She busy with the sandwich. Which one to want? All right. They are too busy. All right. <laughs> this smart classroom lah, dekat dekat UITM. All right. Smart classroom to bawa sandwich satu lagi. <laughs> so I work class I um, three hours classes, and this activity just require maybe about thirty minutes only. 30 minutes and then after that we shift to another activity all right okay this is one of the activity all right somehow yang tadi yeah, yeah, on the, the previous video is the undergraduates this one is the postgraduates uh, different sets of uh, smart classrooms but this one these are still group um, work but what i want to see here is the intellectual uh, thinking among the students so I ask them a one question. They are too busy to solve the problems, and we start to do some sort of reflection, and students start to communicate. I think that one of the best thing is when the students start to talk and share with us. I think this 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 is I think that this is the precious time that we we should have. Can okay. saya kalau dapat moment moment macam ni saya memang sangat happy. So balik kelas tu saya memang senyum je sebab because of what? Nampak dia cakap. Very passionate. So, dia memang nak belajar, kan? Ini kelas pukul 6 sampai pukul 9 petang tau. Kelas petang. Pukul 6 petang sampai pukul 9 malam. Sebenarnya, dia ni bekerja ni. Dah penat dah. Most of them is the teachers. Muka pun dah lembik nampak ni. Ah, teruk ni. <laughs> ni yang pun. <laughs> ini kalau masuk kelas, muka dia macam ni lah. Ni. Ah, ni semua balik kelas. Teachers. Yang ini dua orang ni adalah... I suka panggil industry panels to come in Untuk tengok So Kadang-kadang I ada kawan-kawan Then I call my friend hey, You free tak petang? Why not join my class? Alright All right. And most of them is the teachers lah Dah, dah bekerja dan sebagainya Alright 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 so somehow, kadang-kadang, the group-based assessment is not only you can cater through face-to-face, -face, but also you can use a Padlet as a what we have now, all right? And let the student to interact. And I think that based on my experience, students like to use Padlet instead of their learning management system. I'm not so sure why. Maybe because of the, the life, maybe because of, um, not so sure why. Maybe you have an experience why the students like to use Padlet instead of the LMS? No need to log in. Yes, easily you can access. All right. Yeah. When you see the answers, when your experience, when they when they share their their their, their answers, is it genuine or or how? So they are too, 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 too mark driven. Eh? All right. All right. Spectrum. Spectrum is your LMS. All ah, right. Okay. It's a model. All right.
Dia ada dia, dia dia prefer pet leg. The interface yeah. very straightforward. Somehow the technology ya. Yeah. Some Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I think our forum on the spectrum is not user-friendly. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, somehow, because of you want, you, if you want to embark to the alternative assessment, the technology is very important. You need to find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Much easier. Yeah, correct, correct. Yes, correct. Because because China there are there are lots of restrictions, right? Even though Google they they, they cannot use Google. Yeah, all right. All right, interesting. And I I I quite wonder because of, I have the same experience. When I ask my student to use, we call a U future at my university. The answer they reply back is very short. Not too sweet. <laughs> short, not too sweet. But in the Padlet. The amount of feedback ridiculous. So I had this other example. Yeah, I um, I will tunjukkan you all. There are there are students. I can tell, uh, there are students. They comment for their student work. Their their friend work. There are too lengthy. Panjang betul. Until I kata macam, we you should make a stop. <laughs> Can if not. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like when I give anything, sometimes I just call in during the weekend. Yeah. And then I can see one by one. One by one come, come in, right? And then you can see that your your tablet, they're like, 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 uh, 15 ringgit per, per month 15, 1, 5 per month Sacrifice your MACD It's going to be okay I, I sign up much earlier And I never delete Okay, you, you get how much? I, I don't mind free But I, I got 30 to 40 Oh, then good I got 30 to 40 also But Yeah, yeah Yeah But 15 ringgit is still cheap for me Still cheap just sacrifice your McDonald's, maybe double cheeseburger with the full meals, right? <laughs> okay. Um, this is the performance base. Somehow the performance base, meaning that, uh, for example, because of I'm teaching um, assessment and, and evaluations, um, and somehow um, for my class session, I, I like to do some sort of simulations. So uh, I pick up a question from the schools. I hello my teachers. Hey, teachers, do you have a set of questions? Maybe three to four examples share with me. And then I bring to the class and we do some sort of vetting simulation, for example. And this is where you can see the performance of the students, how they do all the vetting, discussing and whatnot. And you start, you, you can engage them, you can engage them with the real task, giving a feedback and also you give them a real world scenario and allow them to understand the real process instead of you lecture them. You can lecture them, maybe you, you can say, that, okay, the vetting process can do blah, 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 blah. But in my class, so sorry, it's not going to be happen. So I give you a question, do the vetting together. All right? So um, most likely, um, my students, they know my approach when they enter my class. The slides of teaching only five slides less than uh, worst case scenario, I just draw a mind map. <laughs> what is going to be happen within three weeks? Uh, within two hours, uh, three hours, and give them a, a simulation. And surprisingly, the students uh, engage with the content and also um, do the exercise as as per re requested. All right. Okay. So these are the, the, the alternative assessment, all right? As we can see here, uh, from peers, 
until group performance portfolio and technology based assessment is actually can be met with the high impact education practices i think that you are knowing about the high impact education practices so i do some sort of uh, cross mapping to see the doability and the feasibility of this and we can see that it's something that very doable in the sense of um, applying uh, alternative assessment according to the seven to eight high impact education practices and most likely uh, i don't share with you the, about the e-portfolio because i will share later I think that the most powerful alternative assessment in which that we are using the portfolio based assessment as a part of student documentation and also for the job employment. And I will share with you how does my student develop their portfolio and use it the and use the e-portfolio not only for their uh, uh, not only for the job employability but also to sustain um, the networking also and and also the content for the social responsibility towards uh, the community all right so these are the uh, high impact education practices that we can apply uh, across the university courses faculty courses program courses and also elective courses all right so we can do a lot here is actually not only focus on the final examinations but also these are the potential that we can use and also these are the types of alternative assessment that can address for the every single high impact educational practices there are a lot not all but there are a lot of mapping here can be mapped and you can um, what we call sesuaikan dengan jenis-jenis pentaksiran tersebut so meaning that if you are teaching your student with the intensive uh, academic writing meaning that you can plot you can use the alternative assessment in the form of case study portfolio or presentation or written report all right so if you do the collaborative assignment and project across there are a lot of maybe you can you need to pick one but it can across all all right that's the reason why i think that uh, most of the university currently they are more towards on the collaborative teaching and assessment meaning that you are doing your assessment with another department i give you one example in my university I give you one scenario. My vice chancellor asking for every single department to come up with a shoe, UITM shoe, all right? So we have many faculty who are able to come up with the idea of UITM shoe. If we are working in silo, I do imagine that art and design can come up with a shoe where, it, where it is you cannot wear the shoe because of what because of they are illustrating and also showing the sketches and developments of that shoe you still cannot use the shoe you go for the applied science you're asking the applied science to come up with a shoe you still cannot wear the shoe because of what because of the applied science so busy about the materials what is the best material for the for for the shoe and you and you and if you're asking for the another department for example mechanical engineering they are so busy with the calculations how can how can i make this shoe more lighter how can i make this shoe more what we call uh the 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 the, 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 the use term is more more longer than the others and if i bring to the faculty of business the, the faculty of business starts to asking me where is the shoe there is no shoe. So what exactly happened at UITM currently, we more towards on collaborating every single faculty to establish the tangible product that we can use. So meaning that if I want to develop, if I want to create a shoe, let all these four faculties sit together with a different CLO, but we come up with, a, with the same intention. All right, so we need to work interdisciplinary. So that's what actually happened um, then it will reduce um, the numbers of the assessment and the student will gain the experience from others discipline so that's the reason why there is no wonder that if you can see the uh, from faculty a faculty b and faculty c collaborating each other and come up with a one project so how about here 
Is it happen? Not happen. All right. All right. Okay. Good. Two different faculties. All right. So I think that kalau uh, fakulti bahasa di UITM, you are among the good innovators at UITM because of every people will find you. We have an expert on computer science who are develop the software. We need a person good in Germany language. We call you be part of the teams, and we start to create the applications and use for that students. So the innovation of teaching around the circles, around the university, helping each other. So this is how it works. So, and no need to have a grant. We can have a mutual understanding between faculty and faculty. Uh, so it become more interesting, right? So if you from mechanical engineering, can you collaborate with um, faculty of education? Yes, you can. You are allowed to come in. We are encourage you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Not. Not yet, uh, but again, maybe you can maybe you can start with your research first, and after that, start to look at how can you implement in your classroom. Uh, maybe the model is quite quite different because of you are the research models. You need to put your research at the first place, right? And teaching and learning where you can embed, and maybe you can innovate from there. Uh, so maybe you need to find the formula on how uh, to do it according to your research grant, right? Okay, so we are going through for the effective and summative assessment. This is the thing that we are going to do again. All right. So I just want to share with you. These are the blueprint of the program academic. I just give you one example. I just to make it things uh, to overview to you that when we design our program, these are the blueprint that we should uh, oversee. Meaning that you know that what you want to achieve, you know that how to address, you know how to measure and whatnot. All right. So. As I mentioned here is, uh, we need to understand the terms of assessment of S and for. All right, I do believe that most of us know about it. All right, but my focus and intention here is to understand what are the purpose of formative and summative assessment. So I do believe that after uh, when we discuss about the formative assessment before, all right. So we say that the formative assessment where we prior uh, prioritizing, initiating more and learning, meaning that we get. We try to get more interactions, observation, questioning, strategies, student works, and perhaps for the summative, uh, the summative assessment, we are looking at the end of the project, unit, course, semester, and program. But again, don't be surprised. There are a lots of misconceptions happen at other university about formative and summative. It's still misconception. All right. That because of what? Because of they are thinking of the formative assessment something that graded, then they apply in their system. All right. So uh, we have to be very uh, clear about this definition, and 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 perhaps when we talk about the formative assessment, we are talking about uh, we are looking at the teacher, peers, and learner perspective. But again, our 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 role here is to clarify our intention. And also, we want to make sure that we can discuss and also we can improve the student feedback. All right. So now, um, I'm not so sure, but I just want to illustrate what's actually happened when we talk about the summative assessment. All right. So um, I, I'm very sure that uh, our university currently, your university maybe currently, are doing this practice. You have the continuous assessment or final assessment. You conduct maybe through alternative or through final examinations. And your final examination can be conducted whether it was conventional or online assessment. So whatever form it is, all right, we need you, we need to be very clear that the final assessment is not equal to final examination. Okay, the final assessment, the final the final examination is a subset of the final assessment. There are some of universities say that the final assessment is equivalent with 
final examination. This is depend on how you define. Yeah. Intentionally, right? Yeah. 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 All right. How can we define the final assessment? Um, as I mentioned with the MQA persons, all right, we know that based on our perspective as an assessment expert, we have a different school of thought, a different point of view. But according to the MQA, the final assessment can be conducted based on these two forms. All right, the final examination and also the final assessment can be uh, using the alternative assessment to measure certain skill set. So meaning that, yes, you want to conduct your final examination, go ahead, but there are some of the program, their final assessment is more towards on the alternative one. So they don't, for example, for the faculty of music, right? Their, for, their final assessment is not about the final examination. Their final assessment is more towards on the concerts, doing the showcase, playing the, the instruments and whatnot. So the alternative assessment meaning that any forms of final examinations that suitable for their uh, programs and departments. So that's the reason why um, I think that we need to be very clear because of uh, the final assessment is not allowable, only, it's not only focused on the final examination. But currently, I think that we also have a problem also. When we have the final examination, we also embark into the online final examination in which the issue of plagiarism and cheating is easily can be happen at this particular of uh, at this particular of uh, setting, all right. So I'm not so sure whether I heard at UM you have your e proctoring system. Are there? You you have right? I said ada. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm -mm. Device. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So I think that this, these are the things that we need to look at seriously because of we need to we 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 are forced to embark into this because of we don't have any options. Then we have the we have to use the online learning, uh, the online assessment. But again, it's happened to. Um, our university, we also have our e proctoring systems. And again, um, the e proctoring systems need to come up with a proper security and privacy in, to make sure that the students are not easily cheat. Okay, uh, susah sebenarnya, susah. I have conduct many simulation. There are many ways of cheating. <laughs> there are many ways of cheating. Unless you design the questions that not allow the student to cheat. Then it can be soft. Yeah, not able to search by Google. I, uh, based on my study, there are tendency, the, the lecturers who are using online, there are about 60 to 70% the lecture designed the question, they are taking the source from the internet. 60 to 70 percent. But not to surprise, for the answer script, almost about 30 to 50 percent has been extracted from the internet. And not to be surprised, the student extracted the answer from the internet almost 80 to 90 percent. So meaning that everyone is cheating. <laughs> Meaning that everyone is cheating. All right? So again, when we want to conduct the online assessment in which we need to be very, um, what we call, be very cautious because of we cannot ask the low thinking level question at this particular point of setting. So we should focus on the high order thinking of questions, but we are not looking at for the best answer, eh, not the right answer, but looking at the best answer. But again, if the best answer, if 100 students taking this exam, is it you able to assess all the 100 paper? Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. When I was a student, I was, I was trained overseas. Yep. We have open book exam. Correct. We have open book exam. You can bring all your books to the exam. 
Yeah. One, yeah, correct. And you can bring home for 24 hours. You can go and discuss until the cows come home. It's, you must not be that confident that yeah. the answer given is still the best answer. So, but the thing is, the test is, of course, the lecturer has to be very good. Very good, yeah. Correct. And I've never seen their rubrics, but I think they have to have very good rubrics as well. Correct, correct. To be fair to everybody's answer. I don't know. Yeah. I have same experience with you. When I do my master, my first class, when the, when, the, when the instructor said, okay, we have the open book test next week, we are so happy. Open book test or something that we can, you can bring any resources, please bring as many as you can. Wow, we got so excited, maybe this one is a very easy test. <laughs> we go to the library, uh, uh, we borrow all the books and bring all in the tables, but 30 minutes, nothing. We ca I cannot do anything. <laughs> Just stand. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Application. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Yeah. That's the reason why to embark into this kind of questions, we need to train our students since the beginning <laughs> of the semesters. We cannot ask them to do that at the end of the semesters. It's not fair to them because of we need to enculture them, we need to educate them on how to answer this kind of question. That's the reason why it must be started from the formative assessment activity. That's the reason why I'm asking them a very good questions uh, in the formative assessment activity, then I, and easy for me to design my alternative assessment. Meaning that the, 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 the asking, uh, the questioning technique, the answering technique must be inculcated as early as semester one. All right. So when, when people say that, okay, you need to do the open book test, it's not immediately can be happen like, like one day. It cannot be happen like one day. All right. That's the reason why we need to really focus. If you're designing a program, we should look at how can we provide them some sort of a good training in our courses and start to apply and also make it uh, as a culture in your classroom. And I do believe that if you look at our current students nowadays, they are lack of kind of critical thinking. I'm not so sure about your university, but I feel my university, especially for those students who are submitting their final year project, you can see their performance. It's very bad. It's very bad. It's quite worrying for me. Lah. All right? This one, the illustration, just make it things more happening for you, all right? I just uh, scribbles my free times, do this, blah, 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 so you can see this. These are talking about the learning domains. Just putting in the visual to give you some sort of um, excitement on reading this slide. But these are the, we have about five minutes left, right? Ten minutes, okay. These are the, the formative and summative assessment need to be planned for our 14 week. So I like to illustrate everything using drawing <laughs> uh, because of it's clear for me to see what's actually happened to my students and I share this plan with my students. Okay, this student, this is uh, our courses. This is what is going to be happen with us. So this blah, 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 blah. The students say, okay, all right. So <laughs> this is the week one. We, set, uh, we, we do all the, uh, the setting of the learning outcomes. Where is the, the assessment of learning happen here? And these are the testing period that uh, I already uh, set up for the week eight, four, eight, and ten. And these are the final test for the week 13 and 14. So as an overall, we can see here is these are the test assignment, presentation, and the final test. 
and meaning that there are two sets of alternative assessment has been done here. So I need to design the assessment properly. It's, uh, for me, I'm not saying that the test for MCQ is easy, but it's actually construct MCQ is a very difficult one. Um, and also the final test. So these are combinations of conventional and also the alternative assessment. And at the end of the day, the way that I design the assessment is depending on how does the feedback from the assessment as learning and this become the evidence and at the end of the day, we can wrap up and we can see the performance of the student going through for the 14 week. Uh, I tried, uh, I'm, I'm excluded the week for 15 to 17 because of these are the 14 weeks that we with, uh, we with our students, all right? Okay, so what are the issue of the testing when we talk about um, designing uh, and implementing alternative assessment? We are talking about the test setting, all right? The questions and also the reference. Somehow you're not able to design a question because of your lack of reference. So we need to have a reference that helps us to design the questions. And, and perhaps when we talk about contextualizing the questions, we are not only looking on the margin memorizing and sequence of the learning, but we need to translate our question into personal context, social cultural context, and physical context. So meaning that instead of asking students a very simple questions, you might to extend your question something related to these three dimensions. So I want to share with you one video, all right, to relate this. professional with GoDaddy. Let's say there are two new emails in your inbox. One from a legit looking business. What is a machine? <laughs> uh, actually, sir, I was taught to study engineering college. Mein padu. Aaj yaan, hun, bahut maza rahe, sir. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun. It's not a lot of fun. Say, definition bolo. Um, sir, uh, a machine is anything that reduces human effort, sir. Will you please elaborate? Um, sir, har wo cheez jo insaan ka kaam aasan kare ya vakt bajaye, wo machine hai, sir. Garmi lag rahi hai, patan dabaya, hawa chalo, fan. Machine hai, sir. Milo dur, aap apne dost ke saath baat kar sakte hain. Telephone, machine hai, sir. Karolo ka hisab chutki mein karta hai, calculator, machine hai, sir. Sir, actually, we are going to get sir. Pen ki nip se leke, pan ki zip tak, sab machine hai, sir. One second, up, one second, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Definition kya hai? Sir, wohi toh bata raho, sir. <laughs> Exam mein yeh sab likhoge? Yeh machine hai. Up, down, up, down. <laughs> Idiot. Anybody else? Yes. Sir, machines are any combination of bodies so connected that their relative motions are constrained, and by which means force and motion may be transmitted and modified as a screw in its nut, or a lever arranged to turn about a fulcrum, or a pulley about its pivot, etc. Especially a construction more or less complex, consisting of a combination of moving parts or simple mechanical elements as wheels, levers, cams, etc. Yeah, Perfect. Please sit down. Thank you. Thank you. But sir, I have told you that sir, in a simple language. If you like a simple language, join R's and Commerce College. But sir, you should also understand the meaning. What is the advantage of reading the definition of the book? Do you know the book from the book? This definition is the book. And if you have to pass, you will write it. But sir, there are other books. Oh, why? In a simple language, go outside. Idiot. So we were discussing about the machine. Hey, why are you coming back? Sir, I forgot something. What? 
Instruments that record, analyze, summarize, organize, debate, and explain information that are illustrative, non-illustrative, hardbound, paperback, jacketed, non-jacketed, with forward introduction, table of contents, index that are intended for the enlightenment, understanding, enrichment, enhancement, and education of the human brain through sensory root of vision, sometimes touch. अरे कहना क्या चाहते हो? किताबें सर, books, books भूल गया सर ले लूँ? तो सीधा सीधा नहीं कह सकते थे? थोड़ी देर पहले कोशिश की थी सर, लेकिन आपको सीधा सीधा पसंद नहीं आया। So how many of you watch this video, uh, this movie? Yeah? Three idiots, yes, three idiots. How many of you? Don't forget to Three idiots. So what are you going to okay? So, um, a very simple question, but the way that the student reply back is totally different. So how do you see this video? Feed, uh, re, uh, feedback. Mungkin nak nak kongsi? I think uh, the, I think the lecture of um, that class is so I think maybe it's old school. So he just because um, I because the what he did there in the in the college. Like yeah. They, more, there's no research over there. Just teaching to yeah. reduce the degree students. So we have scored the the movie for you. <laughs> All right. Want to try? Reflect. Oh, okay. I, I <laughs> 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 I mean, how oh, you 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 know the name? Good. <laughs> you only focus on the Amir Khan. Eh? <laughs> Distractor. <laughs> Yeah, understand. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's the reason why. Yeah, nothing wrong with that both answers, right? But just a matter of on how we receive all these answers. Um, I'm not so sure whether. Yeah, you, uh, if you go to the net students, you can give full marks because of entirely all the. <laughs> All the answer has been uh, given as such, all right. But I think that uh, the more value, the, the more valuable where is the students can put things in the context, like what Amir Khan did. But how many of the lecturers accept that kind of answers because of our training and our the way that we conduct our assessment? We are more towards looking at the right answer instead of best answer. Mm -hmm. The teaching, yeah, the personality, the teaching approach, the learning style, yeah. Yeah, correct. Like a book smart lah, book smart lah kan. So if you orang kata apa, if you rendam buku yang you minum, you memang boleh hafal lah kan. So, <laughs> so I think that, yeah, that, these are the things that yeah, is gonna be always become our, our our challenge, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. But there is also such a thing as a repertoire, a professional repertoire. Yeah. So do you know the professional repertoire like for linguistics, right? If I mention certain terms, you must know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because it's very hard to go to a conference yeah. and know what people are talking about, right? But then if you don't if you if you don't like if you don't come old school or right. okay. that thing is not presented. Yeah. So the key term, you know, like yeah. 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 Yeah, somehow we need to address on the factual and the conceptual, yeah. but again on how can we design the question. Yeah. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Hello. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Betul. Ah. 
Betul. Oh, hari ni saya berada di UM sampai pukul 5 petang. Ah. Uh-uh. Oh, ah, betul esok saja yang waktu yang ada lah. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. Kenapa apa tak tak dengar tadi because of pejabat datuk VC call me. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Where, 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 where's our discussion? Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. That's the reason why I start. I start with we need. We need to understand our learners first. All right. So then, when we design our question, it's more like addressing all the indic all the what we call uh, all the skills that we we need from them. So I, yes, I do agree that we need some sort somehow focus on the concepts, on the theory and everything because that one is very fundamental. They should know that. But somehow there are portion also to test their their applied knowledge, so to make sure that the students really can adapting when they uh, we we give them a different setting or maybe different environment that allow them to apply the knowledge. All right, so I think that we are almost uh, we are at twelve thirty, so we can break twelve thirty, can? Get a break twelve uh, thirty, and we come back at two. But this after afternoon at two, we will do some sort of activity. Then um, we will share because I already shared with you all the template that you need to be fulfilled, right? So then we do it uh, this afternoon, inshallah. All right. So have a good lunch. Then we come back at two. All right. Afternoon. Assalamualaikum. Afternoon. So we'll be coming back for the second session of the day. All right. So I think that uh, since this morning we are going through so many discussion and sharing. So we also review a few videos, and I do believe that, as I mentioned before, it's not about lecturing, but it's about sharing the experience of alternative assessment. And perhaps um, when we talk about design and implementation, it's depending on how can we share the best practice. There is no absolute methods and approach because of alternative assessment is quite flexible and dynamic because of. We are try to address something that beyond uh, the normal practice, as well as you said before, is conventional testing. All right. So, perhaps, as I mentioned earlier, no matter what, whether you are looking at conventional or a new approach of assessment, again, that asking them a good question is very important. All right. Pernah tak balik rumah tanya, adik buat apa? You are very, what we call, um, lucky if your kid say that, blah 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 blah. Then, yeah. what if your son or your 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 daughter tengah buat apa? Then, so somehow kena kena. I I notice that. Oh, I I I love to relate myself. Uh, during my daily activity, in which that when I ask a question to my kids, kat sekolah tadi buat apa? Uh, kat sekolah tadi belajar apa? Kalau anak yang sulung, dia akan cerita panjang lah. Oh, papa, kat sekolah tadi bla 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 bla. And then you you nak hentikan dia tu kerja kata, can you make a stop? Just give me a very short and sweet, <laughs> kan? Tapi kalau you tanya anak nombor dua saya. Uh, Lily, you buat apa Lily? Dia tak nak cakap. Perempuan. Anak saya nombor dua, very moody. Dia balik sekolah, dia tak nak cakap. Ha, dia tak nak cakap. Kalau saya tanya anak saya nombor tiga, Dahlia. 
What happened to you to uh, what happened to you today? Bla 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 sampai tak boleh berhenti pula. Dia tak bagi orang bercakap. Dia macam sampai habis. And sampai kat rumah tu dia sambung lagi. So meaning that asking a good question is something that somehow you need to be very precise and customized. Kan? You pernah tanya wife tanya. Uh, sedap tak saya masak hari ni? Perempuan akan tanya kan, sedap tak saya masak hari ni? How dia, how how the husband answer the questions? <laughs> Your husband say no. <laughs> asak you, esok you asak kan? Ha, kan? Ya, yeah, you are very unlucky if you are, if you kata no kan? Tapi ada juga yang some of them when you ask, when you ask dia, dia macam boleh lah, uh, sedap, tak ikhlas lah tu Tak sedap lah tu kan So, asking a question Give you a, a Variety kind of answers kan So, I think that when I When I married with my first wife My wife No, no, wife. only first <laughs> No, 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 not only, for, only one Only one One and only Alright Tak berani eh, alright <laughs> <laughs> Sebab petang-petang ni kena bagi you gelak sikit Nanti kan you gantuk Alright So Oh kita habis okay <laughs> Tolong cut yang tadi tu <laughs> Alright So uh, when, when when my wife asking me My wife engineer, engineer 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 background So dia work with the industry for quite some times And nowadays dia become the lecturers lah So dia tanya saya um, Sedap tak saya masak Saya jawab Sedap lah Okay, okay Dia tak puas hati Dia tak puas hati Dia kata macam Oh, ini mesti tak sedap So, knowing her Because of orang engineer ni Dia suka apa? Dia suka details dia, dia, She was very details So, lepas saya dah berkahwin tu Saya dah, dah faham dia, dia Bila tanya um, Sedap tak? I go more precise comments A bit, a bit salty Kalau you boleh kurangkan minyak ni sikit So, nasi tu mungkin, uh, I start bagi komen macam tu Eh, dia diam Dia diam dia diam So dia kata Okay 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 Okay, okay Alright So I will improve uh, Alhamdulillah 14 tahun ni selamat lah So <laughs> uh, Belum lagi yang kata No besok tak ada Tak ada dinner tak ada lah So far okay <laughs> Yeah Yeah correct Micro thing yes Yeah Correct. Yeah, correct. 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 It's a tactic. It's a tactic. Same goes with design the questions. There are a tactic to design the questions. So these are the tactic on designing a question. So meaning that there are a few types. I just recall about six types of uh, asking um, types of question that maybe we can ask in the classroom or even we can do our activity. As a formative or summative, these are six types of what we call the Socratic techniques. So, yes, you good and you know and you understand on how to use the Bloom taxonomy, good. But again, how do you want to relate your the Bloom taxonomy, the dimensions of knowledge, and the type is the and the types of question is very important. If you expected the student to to answer your question in the forms of clarification, meaning that. You need to accept the question. You need to accept the answers of clarifications. So I think that most of the items of testing are more likely using clarification types of questions in their testing instruments. All right. So same goes with challenging assumptions. Is there a difference between points of view? What assumption that we are making? Are you saying that challenging assumptions? So. I just want to story tell uh, because of I conduct one formative assessment. I show to them a lot of Western theory in the context of curriculum and design, curriculum design. So, 45 minutes talking about all the scholars from Westerns, how they interpret the curriculums, how they go about the instructions. And one of my students asked, raise their hand. Sir, a long 45 minutes, I just listen a few names, uh, there are many names from Western scholar. How about the Islamic perspective? How do you relate the Islamic perspective in the sense of curriculum and instructions 
and what is the best model that maybe we can use because of we are also practicing Islamic education. Dapat soalan macam tu waktu you mengajar subjek curriculum yang kebanyakannya theory of Westerns. So challenging assumptions. They assume saja ada tak? So meaning that somehow or other kadang-kadang kita dicabar juga dengan soalan-soalan saja demikian. We also need to test our student to get a different points of view. So meaning that as I mentioned before, if you want to educate your student at the beginning of the semester by having higher order thinking questions, this kind of question something that um, good to us, all right? And challenging assumption is open uh, ourselves and our students on debates, on getting opinions. Maybe somehow we can argue among our peers, among our students. All right? And type number three, evidence and reasoning. Normally, this evidence and reasoning has been used by faculty of law because of whatever they want to, they, whatever they are trying to say, they, they try to say they have to provide with the evidence and how do we validate how do we how they validate valid is the the contents or the the evidence evidence reasoning so i think that when we do some sort of maybe uh, scientific um, writing so we are encouraged to put the evidence put some sort of reasoning try to synthesize it and we deliver the information all right and alternative viewpoint something that very good also there are alternative viewpoints could someone else respond and why. Maybe the students have a different perspective when you conduct your teaching and learning. How do you design your questions and, and how do you allow and how do you receive the student alternative viewpoint and you as a facilitator need to control the content. So somehow, kadang-kadang, bila you buat alternative viewpoint, there are a lot of viewpoint. You as a lecturer need to control the situations. Kadang-kadang ada konten-konten yang menyentuh sensitivity, kan? isu-isu perkauman, isu-isu yang berkaitan dengan perkara-perkara uh, yang tidak sewajarnya. Then you as a, as a instructor, as a teachers, need to be sensitive and aware and become the facilitator and also try to manage accordingly. Somehow kadang-kadang kalau you bercerita tentang konteks dalam alternative viewpoint ni, saya pernah buat satu webinar I panggil orang-orang yang, yang dia memang aktivis. So when you call aktivis, dia akan kata itu, kata ini dan sebagainya kan. You as a moderator, you need to be very good in controlling the content because of kita tak nak dia exploded lah kan. So somehow good but maybe we can have a close session and also to have this discussion. Normally kalau saya normally kalau topik-topik macam ni saya suka bawa topik-topik kalau dalam education tu kan. I bawa saya satu dokumen, can we discuss about this? Macam-macam lah keluar. Again, so, it can be a close discussion, but good to train their, uh, their, their mentals, uh, ataupun to train their criticalness in giving opinions. Implication and consequences, I think that this is the most, I think that this is quite a favorite juga, same goes with the clarifications. Uh, the implication might be you ask the student, the consequences of maybe short term, mid term or long terms and how does they address to the applications. And the last part is challenging the assumptions. So meaning that you are challenging the question, meaning that you're asking question, the student asking back the questions to you. Kenapa buat tak? You tanya soalan daripada pelajar. Pelajar tanya balik soalan pada you. You hurai, you tanya balik soalan pada pelajar. It's normally good to have it in the post-grad punya activity but you need the student who are ready with the context if not they tak jadilah all right so challenging the questions do you think that was important about that question what would have been better to us and what more you can ask all right all right so how can we translate everything that we want to do everything that we are going through in the forms of lesson plan Right, so we can talk about yes, I want to, I, I can do any kind of alternative assessment, but if you are not translating in the lesson plan, I'm not so sure whether you are well prepared to have it in your classroom or not. And again, we want to see one video from Professor Dancelot, so we see.
how does the professor dan slot teach in the classroom Hello, my name is Magat Firdaus Putra, and I just attended Vincent's masterclass. And one will have it so that you will be able to perform the basic steps of foxtrot, waltz, swing, cha-cha, rumba, and tango in proper dance position. To demonstrate confidence on the dance floor, and my favorite, find perhaps your eternal dance partner. Okay, class, let's begin with the basics. This picture illustrates the basic dance position called the closed position. Let me demonstrate. Start with your feet together. Men, you stand with your left hand like this, and you bring your right arm up like this. And you would place your right hand just under the lady's shoulder blade. Ladies, of course, you bring up your right hand like this. Okay, great. We've learned the closed position. Next time, we'll move on to our first dance, the foxtrot. The foxtrot is a very versatile dance that originated in America around 1913. Here is a diagram of the uh, first step of the foxtrot. Let me demonstrate the first step. Men, starting with the left foot, you go step, step, slide together. <laughs> Excuse me. Sit down, please. I'm trying to teach a dance class here. Okay, now ladies, starting with your right foot. Temple music. I wonder if we'll actually get to do this ourselves. No talking, please. This is a dance class, not a social club. <laughs> concludes our review. Remember, the final exam is next Tuesday in the ballroom. The exam will be open book and open notes. See you then. Okay, everyone, let's get started. Find a partner and get in closed position. I'll be looking at these throughout the week. Uh, get your results to you Friday. Break a leg. Let's dance. Dance. Go. So, do uh, you think you got this down? I hope so. I tried to practice in my apartment, but I kept tripping over the coffee table. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I thought I got it from what he said in class, but I get home and none of my notes make any sense. Is this a fox trap? I think it's a rumba. Oh, um, what page is that? I just um, listened the frequency of your laugh. So the high frequency meaning that you see is this thing might be happen to your faculty maybe. All right. So the misalignment, eh? there are lots of misalignment. That's the reason why somehow 
we plan our cost assessment table very nicely but when it comes into the implementation normally you know better <laughs> right so that's the reason why um, we need to plan because of we want to see what's actually happened within that time give us some sort of imagination how it's supposed to be just a plan whatever it is just a plan your plan maybe can change your plan maybe not working all right so the professor dance a lot what are the biggest problems of professor dance a lot what's the biggest problem yeah right so i think that the, the assessment is quite interesting because so they, they want to conduct the practical assessment but somehow the way that she, he deliver not as a required by the by the course by 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 the by the subject all right so what more how about the interaction and engagement seems no more to teacher centered the space is for you you are stage of the stage so don't talk too much let me to talk everything right so that's the reason why i think so that maybe she or maybe professor denslot have a very clear in the sense of uh, their cost linear outcome and everything but when it comes to the execution this is something that we need to look at all right so perhaps why we need to plan because of when we do a lesson plan we need to understand that it must be a few things that need to be considered all right so we want the students to respond of course yes all right to get some sort of uh, expressions of opinion or maybe they are asking a questions but the most important part here is uh, instead of responding maybe they should relate and making a connections between what you teach and what you taught and what are the learning experience has been gained and the most important part here is you allow the student to give some sort of reasoning in the classroom so then the student able to reconstruct the knowledge so uh, that's the reason why um, in the delivery methods all right i think that most of us maybe um, know better on how to design their delivery method because of if we are conducting our online or physical face to face we need to focus on the platform itself the space that we conduct our teaching and learning so the space that maybe affect our that affect our motivation on teaching also learning some of the lecturers say that i don't care about the space you give me any space i conduct my teaching it's totally wrong for me space is matter all right because of this kind of space allowed me to do many things even though i think that more good things about this room because of you can dismantle this table you can shifting everything and leave it empty at the center and you can do a lot of activity kalau kelas saya saya akan buang semua meja ni semua duduk kat lantai sama-sama dengan saya sekali so we want to create something that comfortable to the students and also you also comfortable all right so discuss and reflection that's the reason why at the beginning i teach you i i share with you how to design the questions visual experience student love visual right they love video they love images so your slide don't too much text can so for me that this the 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 the, the learning material itself need to be enhance the student visual experience adapting training to the millennials and the values and leadership your leadership in classroom so for me as a teachers you can add the leadership dalam classroom so pada saya walaupun you mengajar but the leadership you show a good values and think that the students will respect your class much better you can ask my student they never let come to my class because of kalau kelas pukul 8 pagi saya akan datang pukul 7 suku pagi so kita akan lawan siapa datang paling awal siapa datang paling awal i will treat you a breakfast a positive a positive 
and you nak create a positive culture, of course you need to reward them. As a start, siapa datang awal daripada saya, I treat you a breakfast. Normally tak ada siapa datang awal daripada saya lah. <laughs> so if I'm like class master, I pukul 6, I can pastikan I masuk kelas tu pukul 5. I masuk awal. So I make myself prepare. Saya masuk pukul 5 tu, saya susun lah meja, saya nak letak apa, so I spend my time and everything. So that's the reason why speed is matter. I need to manage my time. Sebab tu kadang-kadang kalau waktu kelas saya tu, walaupun saya mengajar satu khusus ya, tapi I need to be, orang kata apa, I need to, you know, apa, ample time to set everything lah. So, sebab itu je satu kelas yang saya ada. Macam you all mungkin ada banyak kelas lah, boleh masuk, lepas tu masuk, masuk, masuk kan. Sebab saya ada satu ya. So I need to prepare myself. Dan, and uh, I think that, um, dan uh, I think that because of, um, most likely there are, um, kalau saya ingat lagi waktu saya buat kelas dengan undergrad, kelas saya pukul 2, pukul 2 petang. So student ni, dia bila pukul 2 petang, dia nak pergi mana? Dia nak pergi makan kan? Dia nak pergi solat dan sebagainya. So kadang-kadang pukul 2 petang tu, dia orang tak sempat sampai on time. So apa yang saya buat? Apa yang saya buat adalah, tak apa, the first thing first, settle you punya zuhur prayer dulu. And then, kalau you tak sempat makan, you bring your food, you makan dalam kelas. Sebab kadang-kadang ada, ada some, 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 some tempat tak bagi makan dalam kelas kan. You makan je dalam kelas. So, we can conduct our teaching. But, you have to datang on time. So, meaning that, as a teachers, you mana boleh lambat. As a teachers kan, future teachers kan, mana boleh lambat. Kalau kelas you pukul 8, you datang pukul 8 suku, you dah rugi 15 minit. Right, so you can datang, datang awal juga. Even though you can datang lagi awal lagi sebab tunggu cikgu lain habis, and you terus masuk. And if you want to prep yourself with all the materials, it took you about 5 to 10 minutes. Belum lagi nak tenangkan pelajar lagi. Ya, yeah, jadi, this are the culture that we set at Faculty of Education lah. So, apa yang saya nak tunjukkan adalah, alright, so these are examples of the lesson plan. This is my lesson plan for 14 week. So I plan for my lesson plan for 14 week. I share my lesson plan to my students. My student will use that as a guideline. So these are the 14 week lesson plan. I'm not so sure whether maybe you am you have your own format. I just use this as an example. You maybe can customize according to your format. But again, when I conduct this, I need to make sure that my instruction is clearly well stated here but the most important part here is how can I design my instruction and my assessment to make sure that when I give my lesson plan to my student they are able they are independently able to follow exactly what has been planned so meaning that kalau misal katalah kalau saya buat blended learning ataupun saya tidak hadir sekalipun this lesson plan will guide them to fulfill that particular of week. So, now, we have a little bit of exercise. So, if you look at this padlet, all right, because too much talking, so, okay, yang baru datang, all right, those are newly come, so these are the padlet, so you can get access to the padlet, even though you can see at the uh, glass board, all right, the padlet address, okay. Okay, what we want to do here is, we want to do some sort of reflection. So, um, I think that we can start with activity number three, all right. So, it's actually, here is the word template, you can download and you can answer uh, you answer these questions and you can re-upload again in the activity number three. So the, 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 the requirement of this task is to get some sort of reflections. Do you currently have assessment at for as of learning in the course that you teach and provide example how feedback has been given for each assessment type? So maybe some of you maybe I think that um, Assessment as learning and assessment uh, uh, for learning or maybe assessment of learning, maybe you practice in your course. If not, don't worry, leave it empty, all right? 
maybe you can list um, a few and after that upload all right so that's uh, the activity number one all right okay activity number two all right because of this activity is um, what we call um, has been designed by sequin all right activity number two is you're listing your learning objective or learning outcome and stated your assessment method with the total of weightage all right so we want to see um, we want to see how does this weightage and how does this uh, learning assessment has been choose and saya nak dengar jugalah kenapa you letak markah macam tu kenapa you pilih assessment tu then we try to reflect what is your plan so you need to fill up first two template and then later we will discuss further on how to make sure that we can design a proper um, assessment all right so oh sorry sorry all right okay there are three set i akan bagi tahu okay sorry the first one fill up the this this form all right this this number first all right okay okay sorry number two okay method of assessment so, oh, sorry this one should be number two this one is method of assessment you need to see the utility for uh, utility formula factor meaning that uh, is it your assessment already address on reliability validity educational effect acceptance and cost efficiency if not you put it as na not applicable just write down something that related to your assessment all right so you need to answer all of these questions and then followed by activity followed by the next activity this one all right so there are three templates that you need to fill up um, the time given somewhere or maybe 30 minutes all right 30 minutes i think that the challenge based assessment so 30 minutes just don't don't make it too too comprehensive just for exercise only all right you need to fill up these three template and we will see the connection between this this and this all right Okay, the download button, if you click Okay, the download button, yeah If you click here, the download button at here The small three dotted Alright, download attachment Alright if you, if you have all those three, then you can fill up If not Either, either one or either two. Okay. All right. assessment we just practice pick and choose then think about the weightage and start to conduct the assessment right so we go a little bit of a little bit of thorough because we want to see uh, i think that you, the utility formula factor also might be something that you have to consider when you choose that assessment
Right. So, how was it? Ah. Come on, eh? Ah. Hmm. Okay. Dia macam ni, eh? Okay. Tadi dia apa? Apa kena soalan dia? Kena soalan dia tadi adalah. Alright. So, oh not this one, not this one, the other one. All right, Ken, dia tanya, how do you currently have an assessment for as or off? Maksudnya daripada tiga ni, ada tak yang, adakah you buat ketiga-tiga ni? Ken, normally you akan buat dua. Ken, assessment for learning, assessment of learning. Yang as learning ni jarang. Betul tak? So kalau ada, okay, kalau ada, provide your example and how feedback has been given. Contohlah yang katakan, assessment for learning ni, you kata, every at the end of the session of the classroom, you conduct a quiz. Right? But the quiz is not giving any marks, just to indicate whether the student really understand the whole context of the classroom or not. So you gunakan, that, you gunakan quiz tersebut untuk apa? Untuk memastikan bahawa Bila you ajar tadi, dekat mana yang pelajar faham Dekat mana yang pelajar tak faham So that's the purpose of having assessment for learning So what more? You conduct an activity For example, you bring the student to the museum And you conduct one activity Is it a grade? Not really a grade But to get some experience in the field work And they will share their experience with you ada grade tak ada grade how to make it it can be happy how can how 
macam mana nak yang kita katakan kalau misal kata you pergi muzium tadi tak ada grade tiba-tiba you kata okey I nak buat dia ada grade you kena pindahkan dia ke sini kan pergi muzium buat field trip ada grade so what ada activity yang you conduct tak perlu banyak mungkin satu ada ada satu atau dua contoh saja dan kita nak tengok ha, nanti kita nak tengok dekat sini kan daripada assessment yang you pilih tadi tu alright macam mana semua elemen-elemen ini dia ambil kira kan you nak pergi contoh you kata you buat field trip okey how about the reliability how about the validity how about the acquisition effects how about the acceptance how about the cost efficiency mungkin you kata pergi field trip bagus tapi kos tinggi so what if kalau you tak bawa pelajar pergi museum you pergi somewhere, somewhere else to reduce the cost maybe the department not allow you to 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 apa to apply a budget maybe 5k to bring students to anywhere kan So dia kata there is no budget you need to do it in your at your campus. Uh, this ada thing yang you kena nak kena fikirlah. Ha uh, kan. Uh, Alright. Yep. Mm -mm.
space something not related to our field even it's not uh, our expertise because of uh, it's more towards on optimization computer data processing and it's very sophisticated meaning that we are this one is towards on the computer science kind of work but what we need to use here is the technology enhanced assessment you use the technology to enhance your assessment so meaning that you gunakan teknologi itu sebagai enabler sahaja all right not as a what we call not as a mention here all right so to have every to have this and everything you need a proper system for example you are using the lms the lms akan adalah the cost akan ada sophisticated reporting computer data processing dan sebagainya your lms my lms have all of this but when we talk about the technology enhanced assessment you just use the technology as an enabler and perhaps uh, where you use the technology as an enabler to make sure that um, you can do some sort of uh, conversation through the through the technology okay? so you pakai padlet you converse with your students you have a dialogue with your students what not and perhaps um, if you are lucky enough or you may be brief enough or maybe you are experienced you can conduct your assessment using technology so and and again when we talk about the technology we have to be very mindful on the barrier and enabler because of when we embark into the technology we have to admit the plagiarism detection and evaluation is an issue it's a big issue all right so I think that uh, one year ago, when I when I attend uh, one international workshop online through Zooms, in which um, there are many experts from many countries on assessment from African, UK, US, these are the issue has been faced by them, almost exactly as Malaysia. So nothing um, different if you compare from UK or US. They are even more higher uh, in terms of plagiarism detection uh, in terms of plagiarism and cheating all right so uh, when we talk about the technology we are talking about the scalability and the transferability the skills if i teach 30 pack of students what kind of technology that really suit with my teaching and assessment right so for example if you want to use padlet for 30 pack of students is okay but for 100 you will die <laughs> so it's quite messy in a sense right so you need to find a very proper mechanism so what are the thing here is all right because of teaching for 30 pack teaching for 50 pack teaching for 100 pack is totally different all right sebab tu kadang-kadang tak tahulah dekat UM sama ada berlaku ataupun tidak kadang-kadang tiba-tiba tukar jadual kan kan tukar jadual uh, Dr. Shamsul, um, minta maaf lah for this semester we have a little bit extra portion for you. We have two classes. Damn! You have plan everything and, and suddenly you have your class exit then 30 pack. So you need to redesign that. I would imagine that how can the lecturers with 200 students in the hall and she or he conduct his teaching her teaching I think it's quite challenging Okay, but ada tak dekat sini yang buat mass lecture? Pernah kan? <laughs> kan? Dia bukan setakat marking saja When you conduct your classroom huh, Saya tak boleh bayang 200 Saya pernah mengajar Seminggu je Lepas saya kata minta maaf <laughs> Saya waktu tu kebetulan saya bantu seorang bersyarah saya tak dapat datang So dia kata Dr. Syam boleh tak bantu saya Can you replace me for one week One session, three hours Saya pula jenis, okay no problem When is the date? Where is the location? Pergi, pergi masuk day one, dua tu orang Alright <laughs> So balik tiga jam, dry <laughs> Okay, so uh, we are talking about the scalability and transferability and also the scalability might be impact to your assessment okay? when you conduct for 200 pack of students what 
kind of assessment that really suitable for 200 packs? You nak buat group work, boleh? Is it you able to discriminate? That's the issue. If you're not able to discriminate, what is the approach? You want to have one-to-one -one assignment? Go ahead, 200. Can you do it? Cannot. So you need to think on the strategy. That's the reason why I, sh I share with you the template. So at least you can reflect yourself. You are very lucky because you are only teaching maybe one or two subjects with a minimal pack of students. Can? But how about those who are teaching mass lecture? 200, 500. At UIT, 500 is a normal. 500. One time, 500. We have a day one, we have a hall for 500 pack students. Macam mana? Ah, macam buat konsert. So you kat depan, macam buat konsert. Betul, serius macam buat konsert. After three hours, you dry. <laughs> After three hours, you dry. You dry, habis. So kawan saya kata, saya, saya, my friend, my friend, dia kebetulan mengajar for 500 packs. Dia kata apa? My preparation like a city no Hariza. I will make sure that I have a good rest, I good everything. Then by the time I perform, I perform and after that I will drive. <laughs> Show time. Memang three hours, memang dia perform. Dia perform lah sebab student tak participate. <laughs> Dia perform lah sebab student tak participate. And I, 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 and I ask her, how do you manage your assignment? It's always like a hell. Like a hell. So dia kena buat lah. 500. Ramai. Kami ada common common code kan? Common course kan? Yang memang semua fakulti, semua program kena ambil kan? Oh, ramai. 500. Apa yang ke 500? Ya? Yeah? Not really. They have AC. AC. Not that and the, the testing is not only MCQ. AC. And and the lecture also give the student to have some sort of written assignment. I can't imagine. Her or his life. No tutor. At UITM, we don't have tutor concept. Uh, no, no tutor. The tutorial or lecture, orang yang sama. I know that some university, like UTM, they are the lecturers and tutor. I'm not so sure. Here also, tak ada kan? Tapi dekat UTM, ada. Dia ada lecturer dan ada tutor. Ah, ada eh? Ah, okay. You also faculty also got some some courses, right? Some courses. All right. All right. So, um, okay, these are the examples. Gamify the learning process. I just uh, just to pick the very simplest one. How can we gamify uh, the learning process? So, I think that Quizzy is the most, is the something that very um, famous on that particular of time, even though Kahoot. Um, but I think that Kahoot start to have some sort of very demanding in the sense of everything need to be paid, right? And I think that Quizzy is still humble and also generous in the sense of we can assess all of these features. And I like to use uh, the, the, I like the, the, the gamification approach and even we can use this data to analyze where is the weaknesses of the students. And for this segment, I, I designed this question according to the topics, into the, into the subtopics. So purposely and intentionally design every single question according to the topics. And we can see that there are lots of red at this area. And meaning that for the next coming classes, I try to cover this one. Maybe I will talk about 10 to 15 minutes to cover and then make sure the students understand the concept of it. Um, Quizzy lagi better lah pada saya. Ha, saya saya pakai suka pakai Quizzy. Quiz, Quiz is ah uh, much better. Kahoot, saya dah lama tak pakai Kahoot. Hmm, nama masuk satu lah. Uh, uh. Alright, dia sama je konsep dia macam Kahoot. Uh -oh. 
Sekarang ni dia macam-macam-macam Dah boleh buat lah Dulu memang macam Just Q&A Yang simple-simple But now So many things Alright um, These are the padlet I has um, been shared before These are the class kick Try this one Good for formative assessment The class kick Because of You can set a one set of instruments But you can see the students uh, um, The student answer all of the shades And for example, if you have 30 You will have the list of 30 of the students And you can see the student progress on the screen This one is very good Alright, so meaning that if you have sets of questions Then you can try Alright, the class cake These are the Kumo space Pernah cuba tak Kumo space ni? Nak cuba tak? Okay, jom kita cuba masuk. Cuba you 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 type this one. Alright. These are the space that uh, allow the the lecturers to design certain environment. And I think that one of my friends using the Kumo space to replace as a simulate as a simulator for their restaurant for their restaurant. So maksudnya waktu waktu um, while the pandemic happened all the students tak boleh balik ke campus kan so what the lecturer did here is the lecturer set up a, a, apa a hotel environment so dia buatlah macam dining hall dan sebagainya so the student melakukan dia punya amalan apa amali dia kan exactly macam dia pergi front desk buat bayaran masuk dekat hotel tu dan do all those activity ada yang nak masuk ah jom kita tengok kejap Okay, masuk, 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 masuk. Alright. Okay, ah, uh, dia capture. Okay, you kena mute a bit lah, so I kena mute good. Kalau tak nanti dia ada apa? Echo. To avoid the echo, you need to mute. Okay. You can move around. Okay, dah masuk. Ada banyak, ada banyak bilik. Masuk sini. Okay, uh, depan dah situ. Dah, itu dah masuk pakai link saya ni. Dia kena masuk yang nama saya. Okay, you can move around. Semua start dekat depan lobi tu. Classroom, you can do some sort of gamification here. Alright, so you boleh bagi task by task. You can design lah. Okay, from the lobby tu, you can design task by task according to your uh, preference and needs. Okay? Okay, later I will share with you how to do it. Okay? Now, at every single table, I will put them the resources. You see here? Google's, Mentimeter, the update YouTube and everything. Alright? Okay, for example... We make a move. Okay, we can. You see here? Okay, these are the Padlet, these are the YouTube. And even can you can do the discussion here. Click here and then you can use the whiteboard. 
do some sort of activity here and whatnot. So just to get some sort of a different experience, lah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So you can do everything here. You can have a discussion and whatnot. Yang dekat sini ni memang student akan suka bergerak lah. Uh, dia akan suka bergerak, bergerak, bergerak and they can socialize. Alright. Kalau you lihat, if you look at here, alright, if you look at here, okay, you nampak tak ada ada macam radius ni? Okay, this one, sesiapa yang dalam radius ni sahaja yang boleh dengar apa yang you cakap. So, di luar daripada radius ni takkan dengar. So, misal katalah kalau you nak have a chat with your friends, dalam radius ni sahaja. So, you pakai earphone di dalam radius ni. Alright. So, meaning that if you want to gamify or you want to do some sort of innovation, okay, you can exit the, from the lobby. Okay. And you can build your own. Alright, you can build your own and you can set your own preference. Nampak tak ada banyak ni? Sitting, table, deco, plants, ground, rocks, activity, seasonal, custom. Semua boleh DIY dalam ni. If let's say lah you want the student to get some sort of experience, you set for them and then let them to experience it. Ini bolehlah kalau tak nak pergi kelas satu minggu So nak pergi your station ke mana-mana ke <laughs> Buatlah macam ni <laughs> Duster will explore I think that Duster will spend a lot of time here Alright But you need to set everything lah Alright So you can conduct your assessment Ya yeah? Ya yeah? Oh no need to pay They give you for free Use the available one But I still But I think that still many Use the available one And customize For a time being, no need to pay because they give you ample room, all right? And uh, every room have a capacity about 30 packs. I think that's sufficient. Okay, if you want to have, if you have about 60, you can you can copy this, um, what we call, you, you can copy the floor and then you can let the student to, you can break the student uh, floor A or floor B, for example, all right? It's a free plan. Alright. This one is very interesting because if you want to engage with your students and you can use it. But the disadvantage here is the student need a very good internet connection. Alright. Okay. This one is the portfolio base. This is something that I love to do with my students. Um, I'm constructing my course portfolio, integrated portfolio, and professional portfolio. So I think that the e-portfolio is something that um, is good to have among of our students. And the e-portfolio is actually the most high significant impact towards the student journey of learning. So, and... I think that I start um, I start using portfolio since I doing my undergraduates because of I do believe that the e portfolio the portfolio helped me to um, increase my writing skills my competency on writing skills because of I know that um, I able to speak but I a bit weak on writing. So what I try to do here is do a lot of writing in the blog just to improve my writing skills. And one of the significant impacts of doing portfolio because of when you doing your writing, normally you will curate and you will articulate your uh, your 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 reflections or your writing. So that's the reason why I keep continue you uh, do my blogging to improve and I think that when I conduct my PhD these are the active platform that I give everything 
on my reflection of the day. So when I come back from my, I go to the I go to the UKM. Start from eight. I finish at five. Ten. Until three, whereas I do my reflections about my study. And this reflection is very helpful because of, and I start to realize that when I write my chapter five, it's easy for me. It's easy for me because of I already exercising myself here. So this block still um, active. All right? So I, sh I, I share with them a lot of things here. Those yang mana nak buat research, normally dia orang, dia orang akan masuk dekat saya punya blog yang ni lah. Alright. Alright. These are the the portfolio, group portfolio, where is the students. I'm using the uh, e-portfolio e for the group. For group. So the students sharing their works. I provide them a shelf. The student will park everything in the padlet. But again, we need to make sure that how do you measure portfolio? You are, whether you are using portfolio, meaning that you are measuring on the skill sets of using portfolio, or you're using the portfolio as a enabler, oh, sorry, as a mediator, meaning that you let the student to park everything here, but you are not assessing the portfolio. You are assessing the content of it. All right? But if you want to assess the e portfolio itself, there are certain criteria, there are certain skill set need to be addressed to make sure that the students, you're able to assess the students. Portfolio. So these are the group portfolio. These are the student portfolio. Uh, it's more likely for the course and the program based portfolio because they are the they are teachers, art teachers. So I make it compulsory for them because of you're gonna teach later. So I need to make sure that all of the student keep it their assignment, keep it their material here. And when the time needed, you can extract it and you can use it for your future purposes. This is my PhD student portfolio. Asking my student to have the portfolio. Um, to see the progress, to see how does the students do their work instead of report me, re reporting me by using what we call um, or one piece of paper of reporting, then we're not so sure what exactly happened to our students. But this one, um, I can see the progress of the student. And even uh, among themselves, their, their colleague, even under uh, my, my supervisee, they are compulsory to have this e-portfolio and start to learn from another to another. All right? So this one is the school practicum training portfolio. Last time, when I come back to the faculty, they asked me, Dr. Samsul, for the practicum session, please use the logbook. I'm so sorry, I'm not interested to. Because of the logbook gives you nothing. Gives you not much impact. So for me that, the best is if the students can use the e-portfolio, replace the traditional logbook, and the student can update what, what, what is actually happened to them in the, in the school, day by day, and they are also can share about their lesson plan, their learning activity, and everything, and you can monitor them every day. So for the 12th week of practicum, I see that the student creating a lot of learning resources that, she can, that he can use for, the, for if he get employed for future. So meaning that, memang tak pakai pun. So I kata tak apalah, logbook tu you bagi je kat kawan you, you focus on this. And the student use this portfolio to complete his final year project. The student go to the industrial, uh, the, the, the school practicum training on semester seven, semester eight, week three, he already completed his final year project. Because of he conducting the, because of all the evidence in the e-portfolio. So meaning that I, 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 am, I, I said to my students, when you go to the school, you are not only teaching, but you need to conduct a research. You to, need to conduct your maybe case study, your action research to make sure that how can you improve your teaching and learning. And so grateful because these students are good students, not so good students. He is actually very weak students, but weak student with a good attitudes. All right. So she followed my, my, my advice and semester eight, 
nothing much problem with his study. So um, quite quite a good student, quite quite a good students at that particular of time. All right. So these are the student portfolio. This one quite interesting because of there are a story behind it. All right. So I think that this happened about four to five years ago when uh, my kids or kids, uh, the, the the eldest asked me, we got the papa. Uh, can you assist me uh, because of um, teacher asked me to do uh, a, an aeroplane but we need to use uh, kata, dia kata apa dia kena pakai bahan-bahan terbuang so I kata dengan, I kata dengan my daughter I'm not going to help you but I will assist you so kalau you suruh I potong cardboard ke apa ke I'm so sorry I'm not interested to but to assist you to find the best materials and let you to do it by yourself, then okay, I can uh, accompany you and I can help you. So, dulu saya duduk dengan dia tiga jam. Tiga jam saya duduk dengan dia, cari. Mana bahan yang dia, yang yang sesuai, yang dia boleh buat sendiri? Tak ada. So, I kata dengan my students, daughter kata dengan my daughter, okay, no problem, let me to think about it. And besok saya pergi kelas. Saya pergi dengan kelas, saya kata dengan my students, okay, students, with your portfolio, Please create one dummy of DIY aeroplane and show to me how can you teach the kids as early six years old and let this material become self-learning materials. And the thirty percent, the thirty, uh, the thirty student, the thirty of my students did this within three days. Kerja ya, tiga hari jadi buat. I go through everything and everything. So I can tell okay, I'm listing all the URL. So I can tell my student, okay, all of your works, I will send it over to the parents. Hello, parents. These are the examples of the learning instructional. I can tell bahan bahan untuk buat DIY. So you can use it. And then please, if you are using this material, please read this materials. I beg you, parent. Perlu buat, oh happy, oh semua buat So dapatlah macam-macam aeroplane dekat atas meja tu And then What the best thing here is The student also get the feedback not only from me But also from the parent So ada lah parent kata, okay this material mungkin dekat sini tak jelas So dia dapat feedback-feedback yang Genuine lah Kan normally dia dapat feedback daripada kita But current now dia dapat feedback daripada parent sendiri Lepas tu for the next coming year, parent tanya I Doktor Ada lagi tak bahan-bahan yang sama? <laughs> so, I kata dengan dia, I'm so sorry, it's only applicable when my daughter need <laughs> that material. So, meaning that, bahan-bahan macam ni sebenarnya ada demand kat sekolah. Ada demand. Cuma tinggal kadang-kadang kita overlook. We are overlook. Dan apa yang saya buat adalah, I treat this as a CSR. Dan memang banyak bahan-bahan yang pelajar saya buat, memang saya berikan kepada parent untuk buat evaluation. So, this is how the student get a, re, a, a response and feedback to improve. And we put this learning, uh, this learning material in the real world situation in which the, 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 the parent will use it, the kids will, will be use it. All right? And I do believe that while, while talking about the, the, the alternative assessment, we also can curate our content using a social media and whatnot. And perhaps also you can use your learning management system. I do believe that most of the university have a problem with their learning management system. But somehow or other, there are good side of learning management system because of you able to do some sort of tracking, uh, you can gather some sort of data. And um, I love to use uh, my, my learning management system because of I can conduct uh, my formative assessment and even though I can conduct my summative assessment and get some sort of this analysis. So meaning that uh, when I give the student marks and the student will get this kind of information and they will try to improve themselves according to the area that they are weak. So I'm not so sure, but, but this is a very uh, important element that we want to embark into this uh, alternative assessment because of giving feedback is very demanding. With the help of technology, we can ease some of the thing, right? And the student will get the marks. I think that's almost exactly the same what UM has been done. And also, I think that it's very important to have a mechanism to check 
the plagiarisms. But at UITM, we are not anymore using Turnitin because we are shifting into original because of this original is very uh, user friendly because the student only can only just need to submit three emails. Submit three emails. Huh? Yeah, automatic. Submit three emails and this one memang sesuai untuk digunakan untuk tugasan-tugasan alternative assessment ataupun tugasan-tugasan yang 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 bukan bukan thesis based lah. Yang ini more like macam thesis based and what not, right? So yang ini memang untuk assignment. So you can see the text matching, the paragraph matching. Even though the similarity index is low, but the text matching is very high. So you can detect on the text matching. It was not so focused on the similarity index as a whole, but 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 it's helping you to see on the paragraph by paragraph. So that's the the, the beauty of um, of this system. I'm not so sure whether I can. Um, extract the file from here or not, but I love to share. If I have it, then it's good. Um, Ah, okay, this one. All right. So these are the report. These are the thesis report. So you can see um, the students whether they uh, do some sort of um, high similarity or not. So you can detect. Okay, this one for example. All right. Sixty-three percent of the block matching. So they will capture sentence by sentence, sentence by sentence. So, macam mana? Ada, 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 ada. Adi, dia terus bagi dekat bawah, kan? Dekat sini, dia terus bagi dekat bawah ni. Dekat mana dia ambil? Nampak tak? Ah tu, dia terus bagi. Tapi ini layout dekat PDF lah. Tapi layout dekat dalam sistem much better, much better. Uh, so then, but the interface uh, from the screen much better. So yes, it can detect uh, about seven to eight language. Yes, they can detect. Yep. Yeah, this one can detect. Yeah. Yeah, from here we can detect we can detect uh, China, Arabic, French, Germany. There are a few language. I think that like 7 to 8 language. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, uh we still using the turning in for the postgrad uh, but for the original for the undergrad based on the purpose lah. So, but again, you can submit either or. All right? We give some sort of option to the student and Next year we try to we plan to have a grammarly because of instead of punish the student we should have the preventions so we use the grammarly to avoid them to do some sort of plagiarism and maybe the grammarly can assist them on how to have a good writing because of where I think that maybe you have the grammarly full version I think that there there are certain indicator that help student to improve the writing skills so we tend to buy that application as a as a tools to help our students lah all right so does the detail matter is worth waiting to get it by Steve Jobs so i think that for today 
uh, only that said, uh, I hope that it can benefit to all of you. It's a sharing, a simple sharing. I hope that uh, maybe you can use this one to... Maybe, after, maybe we're talking about design and implementation, but maybe after this you can extract it a few from here and try to adapt and customize according to your practice. It's just a matter of sharing. Maybe sooner or later I can learn from you. All right, how to do it. All right, thank you so much. All right. All right. So I will update you the, the recent one uh, after I come back to my, to my home. Maybe tomorrow morning, the, 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 the latest versions. All right. Oh, dah habis sebab Adi nak, nak bergerak dalam pukul 4 So I try to finish up everything And hopefully that everything has been covered It's just a matter of maybe Adi nak keluar jadi pukul 4 jadi tu I just try to please everyone lah Alright okay. Sama-sama Alright Okay, all right. Okay. Terima kasih. All right.